Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back once again to the Football Stooges. We're coming at you live with now, I believe, technically the start of midseason madness. Uh, definitely for the um, NCAA football, but also for uh, football. We're starting to get into that middle of the season type vibe. There are no more undefeated teams left. Right, Macedon? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're getting into that. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the stupidest way to cover football. I'm your host, Lob City, and as always, a very sad Macedon this week. Very sadly chosen. There goes the four ganglings. I'm sad every day. This week sucked ass for football <laughs> games in general. Not just because the Eagles, but this week sucked ass. I was kind of alright. Bengals beat the the CLC Hawks. Wasn't pretty, but we got it done. Defense got showed up real big, so um also i really enjoyed after the game joe burr had an interview and he said i gotta get better we gotta get better offenses has to get better so i enjoyed the drive and we're going to the bye week 300 so it could be worse uh for somebody that it is worse for bears fan mamba well 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 Mastodon. <laughs> you know i'm depressed every fucking day okay not not like you guys eagles actually have expectations mamba we don't ruin quarterbacks oh. every year Okay. Eagles have expectations. Uh, a Tank team that it's uh, now coming to the next guy who probably had expectations for this season, but at the same time, I don't know where they're at now. They're in limbo. Squirrelami. Well, you know, it couldn't have been a bad week for us. We had a bye week. And my secondary question is, when did the Astros move to Ann Arbor? <laughs> they're allegations. They are allegations. They have been confirmed and also signal stealing in football and what they do there is completely different from baseball astros was straight out cheating what michigan it's is still doing a funny, is like it's still a funny joke oh still funny absolutely speaking of a funny joke boston sports k enough man why is everybody copying the fucking patriots never as first it was stealing all our players now it's just the same tactics we were using to beat every other team hey at least we're not deflating balls all right at least we're not doing that air pressure decreases in cold temperatures that's all i'm gonna say also, it actually makes it worse makes to throw the ball. Point. And even it's with the plated balls, the Colts were still fucking losing that game. They were, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty tough for Anthony Richardson now being out, which we have confirmed will be probably the rest of the season with, well, not probably, it now is. confirmed to be oh, really the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, because he dives face first like a Viking berserker into a line of shields or something every play. Mm -hmm. Anthony not the Minnesota kind. <clears throat> yeah, no, um, not them. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this party started. We always start with a fantasy this uh, this week in fantasy, which is a video Muzzy makes every week. So, not for the dude. I'm so excited because of the way I changed my name too. Yeah, let's go ahead and see uh, what he's got for us. So, who broke it? <laughs> I'm not mad. I just want to know. Oh. I did. I broke no, it. No, no, you didn't. Tom? <laughs> Don't look at me. Look at Ben. What? I didn't break it. Ooh. Oh, that's weird. How'd you even know it was broken? Because it's sitting right in front of us and it's broken. Suspicious. No, it's not. If, if it matters, probably not, but. April was the last one to use. Liar! It. I don't even drink that crap. Oh, really? Then what were you doing by the coffee cart earlier? I used the wooden stir to push back my cuticles. Everyone knows that, okay. Jerry. Okay, well, let's not fight. I broke it. Let me pay for it. Run. No. Who broke it? Ron. Donna's been awfully quiet. Really? Oh, yeah, really. Oh, now, who's gonna say Donna? Oh, 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 I broke it. <laughs> it burned my hands, so I punched it. <laughs> I predict 10 minutes from now, they'll be at each other's throats with war paint on their faces and a pig head on a snake. <laughs> Good. It was getting a little chummy around here. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. 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 Mine the kryptonite, the, 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 muzzy, the muzzy kryptonite. I actually heard Coldplay is breaking up, actually. What? Yeah. Why Scroll across the Twitter for me. I can read it too. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the f***. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Put <laughs> every vowel. He's throwing fucking Nordic vowels in there. This motherfucker is throwing Nordic vowels. George Kill. Like Kinder. Shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, the driver. Can you just oh, I fucking you love a bridge them. series? Popping a cap in the ass. Cap in the ass. <laughs> I love a bridge oh. series. They're pretty good. That was oh, just God, so really many tanks. That. It was a World War II documentary. Yeah, oh it's my goodness. Something called Girls on Panzer. Something, it's something. Somehow, goes to be, yeah. somehow yeah. they make the tanks actually look like what they're supposed to be more than fucking Hollywood could ever do. Red Rover, oh Red Rover, God. Ben Muzzy, Muzzy right please, over. Muzzy, please send us this video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good God. Very, another, another uh, stand-up performance from Muzzy in the video section. I've been hitting bombs all year. And by bombs, I mean dingers. <laughs> Kyle Schwarber home crazy. run. Yeah. Aaron Hernandez. Big gone Al, forever. I hit dingers. All I right. Big Buzz um, and I hit dingers. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Let's start off how we always do with the first thing that you'll see this week as far as football goes. Um, college well, football. Well. Start well Thursday. Yeah, th oh, Thursday night is football on. Uh, the Jags are playing. I'm not turning it on my television. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, I, don't, I could not care really less. Much. They're blowing the shit out of I don't think I have any yeah. Jags or Saints players on either of my fantasy teams. So, um, well, this ETN's got me 20 points. Oof. I'm Who down the by fuck 20. Are you guys going to play a ranked team? Jesus Christ. Michigan? Yes. Um, <laughs> Michigan State was ranked at the beginning of the year. We're going to also play Penn yes, State. Yes, but we Ohio all knew State. that they were going to get out of the rankings. So. Yeah. I mean, we're going to play Penn State and we're going to play Ohio State and then um, we're Maryland's also a dark Denver. horse. So, um, Isn't Penn State known for like choking against you guys, though? No, I swear. They, usually, I swear they're like they the third or fourth best team in the Big Ten. It's usually, Michigan, and Ohio State are vying for number one, and then Michigan State and Penn State are vying for number three or four. So, um, except for those like four years where Wisconsin decided to try to get in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, you guys, were, you guys, you guys were in the West, so you guys had the easiest path. Like, who else <laughs> is in the West? Northwestern, Illinois, um, Iowa. Who's I, grow, I remember growing. Score. I do remember growing up when we were beating Michigan, though. That, that changed. Quiet because Boston really. College. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Georgia will play Florida. Um, that'll be a one of their. Yeah, will be one of their first challenges. Their hardest challenge thus far was Kentucky, who they beat. So this will be their first big challenge. Michigan will play Michigan State. This is not um, the same Michigan Michigan State rivalry game as it looks like on paper for a long time. Then again, Michigan cannot underestimate them. Um, but Michigan State is having a rough year dealing with off the field allegations with coaching, coaching changes, um, a ton of fucking issues. So um, <clears throat> there will be a lot of uh, extra stuff surrounding that game. But again, it's Michigan, Michigan State. Both teams will show up. Ohio State number three playing Penn State. Big game there. Penn State is at number seven. Um, number six, Florida State will be playing Duke. Decent challenge for them. Um, they've been playing very well, but Duke is also decent as well. Um, 
Washington will be playing Arizona State. Uh, number six, Oklahoma will be playing UCF. Somehow Texas is back at number eight after losing to Oklahoma. They'll play Houston. Easy win for them. Oregon uh, took their first loss against Washington last week that on the game. A pretty of the week. good game. Very I'll good game. Honest. Yes, very good game. Mm. Uh, Bo Nix versus um, oh, who's the Washington quarterback? What's his name? Michael Penix Jr. Michael Penix Jr. Yes, thank you. Um, so that was a comp. That was a. Um, <clears throat> conflict of two of the quarterbacks who are very much so in the Heisman race. Um, so they were going to try to bounce back against Washington State, who's had a pretty good year, but has had some up and downs. Um, and either North- one of them might be quarterback for the Patriots next year. If things yeah. shape out the way they do. Uh, North Carolina will be playing Virginia. They're still undefeated. Alabama will play Tennessee uh, at home. North so Carolina. North Carolina will stay undefeated. UVA is bad this year. Yeah, yeah they got the uh, they got one of the other quarterbacks. Uh, Drake May, I think, is his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Old Miss will play Auburn. Should be an easy win. Auburn has been very bad the past few years. Utah will play USC. A tough challenge for them, even if USC did lose to Notre Dame, who's next on the list at 16. They play Pittsburgh. Pretty easy win for them. Guys, I said before, Duke yeah. will play Florida State and Tennessee will play Alabama. Would love to see Tennessee win, do the same thing they did last year, you know, tear down the goalposts and throw them. But they're at Alabama. It's going to be a tougher challenge. We'll see how it gets done. Uh, USC roll again, tide. play Utah. Uh, no, no, Vols, baby. Vols. Um, no, roll tide. LSU is playing Army for some reason. Go off. Um, okay. Missouri is playing South Carolina. Hopefully they get the job done there. Louisville will play Duke. Um, they got their first loss this season and fall seven spots. Uh, Air Force, who is undefeated, will play Navy. Uh, they are ranked number 22, so props to Air Force. Usually uh-huh. the Armed Forces teams are very, very, very often not ranked, so this is a surprise to see uh, them. Air Force, at, for the past like 20 years, they've been ranked for at least 10, like 10 years before. Air Force hey. is one of the rare ones. Yeah, because they don't do triple op- because they don't do triple option like Army and Navy. Yeah, because just how they are with the um, uh, when they have to actually like be uh, when they commission, they have to go like right after usually something with a weird thing that they yeah. have to do. Uh, Tulane played North Texas, number twenty four Iowa, another Big Ten team. They don't back deserve in. it. I mean, they're six and one. Yes, but let's guess? let's. It, I was at the game. They don't fucking deserve it. Uh, I had will play one in play, one play, one play made the game, and Wisconsin sucks. They don't deserve to be in the rankings. Yeah. Um, and then for some reason, four and two UCLA is at number twenty-five. They're gonna play Stanford. Who are coming off probably the craziest upset of the week? I have yeah. to say. Yeah. Beating Colorado while. Colorado was up twenty four nothing at half. Twenty nine, I think, was the the highest they got before the Yeah, weird. Uh, other in chat. the locker room posting about merch. Yeah. <laughs> um, other top receiving votes again. Uh, One hundred twenty two votes was the total from the number twelve twenty five spot. UCLA. Um, other receiving votes: James Madison, Clemson with thirty five, Florida with twelve, Washington State with eleven, Fresno State with six, Liberty with five, Kentucky with four, Wyoming with four, Kansas with two, West Virginia with one, Oklahoma State with one, and Miami with one. Uh, so, so they gave UCLA, who's four and two, twenty five, but James Madison six and zero. Oh. But who's James Madison playing? I can't remember who they play, but I kind of go with more records rather than ESPN looking perception and yeah. dick sucking. So UCLA has a lot of money. As I said, dick sucking. Yeah. Dick sucking. Uh, so yeah. James Madison is playing. Hold on, I'm trying to see there. No, not. No, yeah, I'm just happy I got to see Virginia Tech win at homecoming. I was happy. Oh, they played Georgia Southern. Must, must be nice to see your home team win. It was right. sunny at like 70 degrees. Then it went to like 40 degrees. It started raining in like a hour span and it went back to sunny and then back to raining. Yay, mountain every I- weather. Every all Iowa right. fan that kept shit talking us on the way out, I just said, it's all right. Daddy Penn State will call you when wrestling starts. <laughs> Oh, God, the, every, the fact that you had to bring up wrestling as a comeback to losing a football you game would you would is be surprised so you would be surprised how many people got pissed off at that. Look at Big Ten for wrestling; they are. I mean, yes, it's a dominant. very big thing in the Big Ten. I mean, I, honestly, dominant. I think wrestling might be bigger than Big Ten basketball in multiple facets. But then again, we do have Indiana or Purdue, so I don't know. Yeah, depends on the school, but you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, also, uh, Gorlami. Are you going to hit that? No. Are you I'm going to finish what I'm saying? What were you saying? Um, 
every year Iowa thinks that they're going to be the Big Ten champions, and then they meet Penn State, and Penn State fucks them because they have the best coach in probably the world. That's yeah, not even a joke. I can't even say that on a straight face anymore. They have the best wrestling coach in most likely the world. Mm-hmm. He, that man's insane. I don't even remember his name half the time, but he can fucking coach wrestlers. All right. Uh, with college football out of the way, let's go ahead and get to some off the field news with KDuff, and then we'll move on to the scores. So, KDuff, take it away. All righty then. Let's see what we got this week. As we've already talked about, for, as we go into injuries, Anthony Richardson, Colts quarterback, out for the year. He was dealing with a shoulder injury where uh, he was actually debating earlier this week whether or not he was going to have it or trying to play with it. He's been taking the smart route and taking the surgery, which will uh, end his season. Uh, other out for the year, only other out for the year, Lions lost to running back Zonovan Knight uh, with also a shoulder injury. Uh, short to long-term stuff, we got Rams running back Kyron Williams out at least two games with a sprained ankle. Uh, Bills running back Damian Harris also out this week and – uh, and unknown how long he's going to be out after that pretty pretty scary neck injury he had in their Sunday night game against the Giants mm. this week. He is luckily okay, though. They, the team confirmed that he he's awake, has extremity, has movement in all his extremities, excuse me. So he'll be fine. Uh, but, uh, some of that, we have no idea if he's going to be fine or not. Uh, Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill, he, he injured the same ankle he had surgery on uh, last year in their game in London this week against the Ravens. Uh, which is why we had a rare Malik Willis sighting at the end of the game there. He's at least out two weeks. They didn't bring out Mayo, boy. No, they uh, had Malik Willis in. Wow, really? Man, that guy's getting fucked. He had a projected, like, top five pick, something like that, and now he's not even playing on the Titans without Tannehill? I mean, I guess it depends on how the rest of their depth chart is looking right now. Like, maybe Willis just had a better preseason than him. I don't know. You saw him last year. There's no way in hell. (laughs) <laughs> there's no way well, I mean it's, this is the Titans we're talking about dude I mean yeah like true have, true I mean, yeah but they have Der- Derrick Henry and what else for a skill position player I mean Hopkins but yeah. he's that's what happens when you get a player from Liberty University fuck Liberty <laughs> yeah other short to long term stuff we I don't actually have listed how long he's going to be out for because it's a Bears quarterback Justin Fields which it feels he uh, dislocated his thumb on his throwing hand this week and we have and until the swelling goes down, he can actually grip a football again. Uh, that can take like a couple weeks at least. Uh, other questionable is one I oh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> one I have actually not been reporting on, and I don't know why I have one questionable this week. Uh, still, Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. He's had, actually had a rotator cuff injury that he's been nursing, which is why we saw the PJ Walker sighting and their win over the 49ers this week. Uh, and apparently he hasn't ha- also ha- been dealing with this a while. He hasn't had a full practice sit in almost a month. Like his last full practice besides today was uh, September 22nd. So he's been dealing with shit. Uh, let's yeah, see. We also have. Karma's a bitch, Bill Cosby. Yeah. I didn't have. Uh, I actually forgot to erase this one, but uh, Trevor wants to deal with a knee injury. He is playing tonight. So that's obviously changed. Um, Someone I that's already live the before. Real quick, if you if you, sorry to interrupt, I have a live report. Derek Carr just left the game with a groin injury. Oh shit! I, yep, he's hurt. I just yeah. saw it. Yeah. Just saw. Yeah, it. he just tried to scramble Speaking throw of, across his body, and he tweaked his groin. It looks like. Speaking of Raiders quarterbacks, former or current, we also uh, someone else forgot to change. Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. He's been downgraded to out this week with the back injury he sustained against the Patriots. Uh, Buccaneers quarterback Brett Baker Mayfield's dealing with a hand contusion. Uh, Lions running back Dave Montgomery's got a rib injury. Uh, the 49ers, my God, they lost. They have a a few injuries in the trenches here. Christian McCaffrey with an oblique. Debo Samuel with a shoulder injury. Trent Williams with a sprained ankle. And on top of it, they lost the fucking Browns. <laughs> and uh, then we have Vikings yeah, defensive yeah, end Marcus yeah, Davenport yeah. with an ankle injury. Uh, Seahawks wide receiver DK Metcalf with a hip injury. And Patriots defensive tackle Josh Uche with a foot injury. Uh, other notable stuff that's happened on the injury front this week. Uh, Dolphins cornerback Jalen Ramsey. He's been out since July this year after having knee surgery and was expected to be back by uh, December. But reports from the team said he's actually ahead of schedule in his recovery and could be on back on the field in like two weeks' time at the most right now. 
So that we could finally see Jalen Ramsey this week in a, this year in a Dolphins uniform, uh, probably sooner than we think. And uh, another one that I feel like is being a little bit blown out of proportion, uh, Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers was seen standing and throwing passes on the field uh, in the lead-up towards the uh, Jets game with the Eagles this week. And people are thinking that like he's going to have the quickest recovery possible from an eight from an Achilles injury in NFL history because he's already like standing and throwing a football like two yards. Like it's it's still an Achilles injury. The guy's got to recover. That ayahuasca man. Yeah, the, the ayahuasca and immunizations that don't might not involve needles or sit, and just involves like sitting in a dark room for three days. That just fixes painkillers. Painkillers is a hell of a drug. Well, I mean, ayahuasca is also a hell of a drug. Uh, He's got to be shooting heroin. He's got to be. Shooting. I don't think heroin would fix that. Uh, let's see. Going on to signing news, uh, Eagles have signed former Buccaneers wide receiver Julio Jones on a one-year deal after uh, injuries to I think it was Marquez Cal- uh, Quez Watkins and Marquez Callaway. Makes no sense to sign Julio Jones as a no, it really replacement. Doesn't. But go off. Yeah. Also, yeah. need more quarterbacks and secondary so, because we're somebody that new is football player. Yeah, somebody that is uh, getting some injury replacement after uh, AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones have been dealing with injuries on the Packers. Uh, they signed former Giants running back uh, James Robinson off their practice squad this week. Uh, that another yeah. running backs, another couple of running backs that got signed this week. Uh, Rams have brought in former Vikings running back Miles Gaskin and brought back. Uh, Daryl Henderson Jr., who spent last year with the Jags and won uh, the XFL championship with the Arlington Renegades. And uh, uh, Falcons uh, released uh, safety Jalen Hawkins, a uh, former starter of theirs this week, and then was picked up by the Chargers the next day. And in his first practice, has already carted off uh, off with injury. I don't know exactly what the injury is. It just apparently just happened earlier. Uh, so just not good luck for him. Moving on to trades and releases. The Broncos have released their second defensive end in two weeks in Frank Clark, who only played two games with them after signing with the offseason from uh, Kansas City. Uh, he's the second pass rusher in three weeks to be released following Randy Gregory, which and leaves them with basically Jonathan Harris and Zach Allen on as their, uh, their starting defensive ends. Uh, speak, someone else that's a former chief that did not – pan out in the new uh, team they landed on. McCole Hardman, he is being traded from the Jets back to the Chiefs in an exchange of uh, late round 2025 picks. Uh, uh, Panthers wide receiver Terrence Marshall Jr. had his request this week approved to seek a trade as he's looking for a more prominent role on team's offense. Of course, he's not going to get it with the 0-6 Panthers. And uh, someone that's not going to be moving probably this year, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins. He has announced that he is not waiving the no-trade clause in his contract, indicating he is not going to be moved at all uh, before the deadline. Uh, Finally, going into miscellaneous news around the week. Uh, Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, he has not been doing hot this year, uh, but he has made another accolade as the third person in NFL history to coach 500 uh, 500 games, so he's joining Don Shula and, um, and George Howells in the department. Uh, one of his former team, uh, one of his former players, though, uh, former defensive back Sergio Brown, he is probably going to not be seeing any fields recently. He was just arrested this week in Mexico uh, and being sent back to the U.S. to face murder charges in connection with the death of his 73-year-old mother, which is just fucked up. Uh, someone else has uh, also been arrested this week. Uh, reset the clocks because there's been another Antonio Brown thing. Oh my <laughs> god! Else is that no, 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 no. This was good. Yeah. This was actually he was actually uh, so he was finally arrested this week in Florida, not for fucking up of any one of those teams, not for the multiple assaults he's gotten away with for not paying people, but he got arrested for not paying child support to the mother of his daughter, and uh, I. Unfortunately, was only released on like fifteen hundred thousand dollars bond, which I have no idea how he was able to afford that if he's broke as fuck right now. Uh, let's see other news. Colts defensive tackle Grover Stewart he was suspended six games by the league for PED violations. Uh, 
this was uh, also somewhat interesting. Panthers had Panthers. They have been awful this week, as I've I mean, well, this year in general. I don't know why I said this week, uh, which has resulted in head coach Frank Reich ceding offensive play calling to offensive uh, coordinator Thomas Brown, who's uh, spent three years in the league as a assistant head coach, running back, and tight ends coach with the Rams, as well as uh, running backs coach at. Uh, University of Wisconsin, South Carolina, and is all my mater at Georgia. So we'll see if they, that gives the shot, Panthers a shot in the arm they've been missing. And finally, a lot of a uh, lot of news this week about uh, players looking to for ownership in teams. First, it was uh, released when a uh, NFL insider Dov Kleeman announced that agents for USC quarterback Caleb Williams wants a stake in ownership of whatever team. Uh, drafts him should he declare this year and that additionally Aaron Rodgers actually apparently secured uh, attempted to secure equity with the Jets during their contract negotiations before the league stepped in to say that's not allowed so I guess how is Caleb Williams saying I want equity in the team as a draft pick and Aaron Rodgers a three-time MVP negotiating a brand new deal with the Jets couldn't get it via the NFL's ruling I don't know. Uh, I guess that the more I hear about I, Caleb I Williams, the more the I radar, hear. But... Like the more I just don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to even discuss then him as a quarterback. He can't. Yeah, I mean, you can. I mean, talking about that when you retire, that's one. That's probably the only thing I've really heard about that the NFL isn't really cracking down on too much. I mean, Russell. Russell I can't fucking talk. Russell Wilson has said he's wanted to uh, own a team when he retires, and so has Patrick Mahomes. Apparently, recently, he's actually got ownership in a couple teams, like the uh, like the Royals. He owns a Formula One team, I think, or has a stake in ownership of it. It's so. I mean, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Sense. That's some, the money's yeah. money. Yeah, I mean that yeah. makes sense. But if you're trying to go with the team that you're playing for, I can see that being kind of uh... yeah, it's a bit of a conflict of interest there. I can I can see what you're yeah. getting at there. Uh, finally, news: uh, The NFL has not stated whether there will be uh, fines or suspensions for any of the teams or in players mo- resulted in multiple pregame fights that broke out this week. First one between the 49ers and Browns when Debo and Trent Williams were began a scuffle on the Browns sideline, and then again on Monday night when uh, Chow- Car- Cow- yeah. Cowboys and Chargers fuck me, what's happened to my ability to speak? Uh, got in a fight during warm-ups where Dante Fowler nearly punched Austin Eckler's head off. Like, his helmet went fucking flying. It was it was wild. And then finally, we've briefly talked about it, but news came out this week, or today, recently, that the NCAA is investigating the University of Michigan's football program and head coach Jim Harbaugh for violations involving scouting out future opponents and sign stealing. Which, uh, that could probably just result in fines. I wouldn't, I don't exactly see too much that could result in Harbaugh being fired probably won't happen so that's all I got it's probably just going to be fines if it's found it's guilty um yeah I mean if Kansas doesn't get in trouble for FBI investigations then nothing's going to happen to Michigan Mm -hmm. no the the worst thing that can happen there is there just some fines or anything like that I all and all NFL NCAA teams steal signals it's not something that Michigan's just doing they just were stupid enough to get caught so went wrong yep all right. Thank you for the news, Kadoff. Informative as always. Let's go ahead and now get into the overview of the games from last week. We'll start with. Uh, uh, oh, oh, that's. God Broncos damn it. Country, okay. let's ride. Broncos Country, let's ride. Broncos had a, another really bad time on Thursday night. Thankfully, the other team did score some points. Not a huge blowout, as you would have expected. Final score was only 19 for the Chiefs and uh, 8 for the Broncos. I kind of expected a bit more, but we'll see. Um, you know, wasn't much in there. But again, Chiefs got out with the win. That's all I really, really care about. Um, most of this game was focused on Taylor Swift anyway, so who cares? Um, uh, so the Broncos... Me. Wilson went 13 for 22 for 95 yards, like 100, 100 yards passing. One touchdown, two picks, four sacks, 46.6 rating. Yikes. Uh, on the ground, Javante Williams, 10 for 52. Russell Wilson, 4 for 31. Uh, Jadil McLaughlin, 7 for 30. And Michael Burton, 2 for 2. For receiving, Corlin Sutton, 4 for 46 on a touchdown. Samaj P. Ryan, 2 for 16. Jerry Judy, 3 for 14. Jaleel McLaughlin, uh, 2 for 12. Uh, Andre Topman, 1 for 4. Greg Dolchich, 1 for 3. Um, 
that's it for them. They had 115 total yards of rushing and 95 passing. Ugh. Um, for the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, 30 for 40 for 306, a touchdown, a pick, two sacks, and a 94.4 rating. A pretty good day for him. Not awesome, not horrible, just there. Uh, Pachanko, 16 for 62 on the ground, followed by Mahomes, 6 for 31. Clyde Edwards, uh, Hilaire, 2 for 7. And then Noah Gray, 1 for 1. Um, for receiving, Travis Kelsey led the way, 9 for 124, uh, followed by Rasheed Rice, 4 for 72. Isaiah Pachanko, 6 for 36. Guy Moore, 2 for 22. Jarek McKinnon, 2 for 20. Noah Gray, 2 for 14. And Kadarius, 23 for 9 as well as Clyde Edwards, the layer one for nine. Um, this this was a uh, a bad game for the Chiefs, I think. Um, their offense kind of didn't really get going as well as it should have, but at the same time, they were playing the Broncos, so they could afford that. So if you have a bad day and you still win, that's a good sign for a team. Good sign for the Chiefs. Um, I think the bigger stuff we're going to talk about here is the Broncos. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? Sell everything. Sell everything, yeah. Get rid of get rid of, uh, get rid Russell of Wilson. Who's taking, draft who's, Drake May. who's taking Russell Wilson? No one's going to yeah, take him. Also, take him. Also they're going re- to realize that I he's going to be like a person who has to realize that nobody wants his talent and they just retire. Probably yeah, buy, the, a, ten, probably buy the Bears in three years. He has a big contract, so that's going to be a tough one to trade off anyways. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, nobody wants him. So yeah, I don't know. You're just... How long is Falcons? his contract? Falcons? How long is his contract? Tyler Heineke. Falcons. The Falcons. They yeah, and they're still not using him even when Desmond Ritter looks like shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't no, but know, Russell man. Wilson's contract, how many, how many uh, years are left on that? Uh, let's Hold see. On. Investigating reporter Matt. Because holy on. shit, fucking Broncos could be trash. For okay, me, it's five years. Oh no! From now Ooh, that was a mistake. From now or from, from when he signed from it? Last year. So from when he signed it, so last they year. Three, three more years. Three more years. years. They've done one in a bit, so they have three more years on the contract. Two hundred forty-two mm-hmm. mil total. Ooh. Yep. Jesus. Uh, I'm trying to see. One hundred twenty-four mil guaranteed. I'm trying to see the dead cap. How the fuck do you trade that off? How like? Dude, the Broncos straight up got a lemon. Is there like a lemon's law in fucking football? Because Jesus Christ. That's where guaranteed money comes into play. Yeah, that 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 is true. But even guaranteed oh. money, he's getting a lot. Post June first release, Denver be on the hook for Wilson's thirty nine mil salary for twenty twenty four. So that's thirty nine mil dead cap. Uh, thirty five point four mil twenty twenty four dead cat hip and a forty nine point six mil on a twenty twenty five dead cat hip, dead cap hit if they spread out his option bonus. Sheesh, that's a fuck ton of dead cap right there. Who- yeah, that's bad. Ouch. Oh so man, this was a this was a Thursday this was a Thursday night football game. That's Damn it, Elway. I'm at Elway. Yeah, I don't. I don't. The, the if the Broncos are going to rebuild, which it looks like they're doing, they've already got rid of two of their defensive ends who were a you know big cap hit. That means they would have to get rid of like Russell Wilson, um, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. Judy's still young. Like, well, let's take a look at ages here. Judy is 24. Okay, you could probably keep him. Yeah, he was in, picked in 2020. So I mean. Probably fine. Still a rookie contract. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be tough. You might want to, you know, get rid of him when you can. Corlin Sutton is 28, so that might be an issue. <laughs> Maybe if if you're doing a fire sale, do it. Get Russell Wilson out. Yeah. Obviously, people are going to be willing, much Ow. more willing How to trade. are you going to get Russell out? Well, I don't know if you can get Russell out. However, people are going to want Jerry Judy and want Corlin Sutton. Those oh, are yeah, two sure. decent receivers. Now, even, honestly, uh, Samon J. Like P. Ryan... So Andre P. Ryan might be a good trade as well. I mean, you can still get something. I'm not saying you're going to get a first round pick, but you can still get no, something. Of course. Oh, Saints player just dropped it. Fabian Moore just dropped it in the end zone. Yeah, the game. Uh, oh, car car is back play. yeah, Car is back playing. Yeah, he's back and still mm. getting dinged up too. He took a late hit. Yeah. Um. Mm. So this was a Thursday night football game. This was a Thursday night football game. I thought we learned last year. Oh, fourth and goal. Hold on. Fourth and goal for the Saints. Steps back in the pocket, yeah, and throws it up. I mean that that meme Maybe I said about Thursday night football I think is pretty, pretty accurate. 
Is that last play of the game? I know it's yep. kind of yeah, late. Yeah, that, that was fourth down. Oof. And I am putting the scores for the predictions for that game now. Yeah, there we go. All right, um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, one of the London games. Just a heads up, that Thursday night game set the tone for the rest of this, because get ready for a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, Baltimore Ravens 24, Tennessee Titans 16 from Tottenheim Hotspur Stadium in London, I believe. I love it. Um, for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson 21 for 30 in the air for 230, 223, 7.4 average, one touchdown, one pick, one sack, and 88.6 rating. Uh, he was also the lead rusher, 13 carries for 62 yards. Gus Edwards, 16 for 41. And Justice Hill, 8 for 35. Um, for receiving, Mark Andrews, 4 for 69. Zay Flowers, 6 for 50 and a touchdown. Nelson Aguilar, 2 for 40. Odo Beckham, 2 for uh, 34. Rashad Bateman, 2 for 15. Gus Edwards, 1 for 12. And Patrick uh, Patrick Card, 1 for 3. Um, then for yep. the Titans. Uh, yep, this was what I was talking about. Ryan Tannehill went 8 for 16 for his injury for 76 yards for a 4.8 average through an interception, had two sacks and a 37.5 rating. After his injury, Malik Willis came in 4 for 5 for 74 yards, no touchdowns, no picks, a 14.8 average, four sacks and 11, a 111, oh sorry, 118.8 rating. He did um, look bad. No, but taking four sacks is bad. Um, especially that against a Ravens, especially against a rape. Well, no, against a Ravens defense that doesn't have a ins- they have a decent amount of pass rush, but it's not insane. So well, their O line is pretty trash. I mean, they have Peter Skaronsky, mm-hmm. and that's basically it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the Baltimore defense also like banged up? Banged so, up and Fubar. It's man. a Pro Bowl roster. That's basically the Baltimore's injury list is a Pro Bowl yeah. roster. Yeah. yeah, their IR could make the Hall of Fame in about ten years. As far as other stats, Derrick Henry rushed for 97 yards and 12 carries and a touchdown. Uh, Tajay Spears was their leading receiver, one for 48, also with Akini, three for 25, and Hopkins only had one for 25 targets. Um, so, just a bad game if you're a Titans fan. I, if Tennessee wants to rebuild, I get it, but why do you have like Derrick Henry and DeAndre Hopkins, like aging, still very good superstars, if you're going to try to rebuild? I, I don't get it. It's it's not a good look. It's not a yeah. Good. Not lo- not a good look either losing to the Ravens by four in London. So, or by eight. So Speaking of not a good look, look. <laughs> another fucked up game. God damn it! Yeah, weird game here. Same score, twenty four to sixteen. Commanders twenty four. Falcons sixteen. Uh, same we don't Howell. even need to talk about this game. We just need to show the picture of uh, Arthur Smith reacting to that that interception, and we could just end it there. Yeah, uh, that was just awful. Sam Howell, 14 for 23 for 151, 6.6 6 average, three touchdowns, no picks, five sacks, a 119.7 rating. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr. was a leading rusher, 10 for 31, followed by Carl uh, Chris Rodriguez Jr., 4 for 23, and Antonio Gibson, 3 for 15. Uh, Scary Terry McLaurin led the way for receiving, 6 for 81, followed by Curtis Samuel, 4 for 42, and Brian Robinson Jr., 2 for 25. For the Falcons... Oh, yeah, for the Falcon, Desmond Ritter, 28 for 47 for 307, a 6.5 average, two touchdowns, three picks, three sacks, a 66.5 rating. Um, rushing, Tyler Al- um, Algier, 13 for 51. Um, you got it right this time. I did. Bijan Robinson, 13 for 37, Desmond Ritter, 2 for 18. And then receiving, uh, Drake London, 9 for 125, that's a bright spot there. Kyle Pitts, 4 for 43 in a touchdown. B. John Robinson, 4 for 33. Matt Collins, 3 for 41. John Smith, 4 for 36. And Michael Pruitt, 1 for 9. Um, the biggest thing here for Atlanta is they have some good pieces. Drake London's looking better. Kyle Pitts is kind of looking better. B. John Robinson is a very bright spot. Um, mm-hmm. ye, something's got to be done about the quarterback position because Ritter is not cutting it thus far. Are you going to give him time to develop? <laughs> or are you going to try to trade for somebody? Are you going to try to bring up... Um, uh, Taylor Heineke, like, what are we doing? Also, why would you not put Taylor Heineke in playing his former team? I really would, don't like, know what. What are we doing, in Atlanta? There's mm-hmm. some the aspects here, man. That make me yeah. scratch my head. What's sad? What's sad is that Atlanta's defense is sneakily good. Yeah, they're not yeah, it is. great, but it, they're not bad. Yeah, it's something's got to change in Atlanta. Um, like Ritter, Ritter definitely has a change. Also, props to the commanders for throwing different looks at Ritter to make him call out the ball. That's fine. You know, mm-hmm. good props to them there. But Atlanta got to change the quarterback position somewhere, I think. Um, yeah. 
I think this game I, kind of proved that. Uh, I got I got two videos here, Mamba. So so uh, so. Uh, oh boy! Be ready. Oh boy! <laughs> First of all, uh, <laughs> I said uh, this one. This. What what was he even? Oh, that's your that's your teammate. That's your teammate. He's just just. Rabbit's well, playing again. This who who's he blocking? Nobody. Oh, <laughs> Steamy. Like, why is he blocking our <laughs> own line? I don't. That's your center. Uh, yeah, center, center the team right, team. Uh, the right tackle, and then a right guard. Look. And then no staff is They just right look through. at each other. They're like, ah, we fucked up. Yeah. What have right, we right, done? We fucked up. Oh. All right. Just all right, keep shuffling. Go. Just keep shuffling. It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it literally turned into a cripple fight. <laughs> no, can't grab it. Sure, why not? <laughs> this is a good ass block. Get your fat ass back here. Get your fat ass back here. Mission proud. We'll get him next time. What the fuck did he do? Oh! Run, bitch! Run! Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> 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 Over the line! Coming up on the two minute war. Who the fuck is that guy? Let's it fly, but it's a duck and it's a oh. But it's a duck. You can hear that thing he whack it. Oh. He's some, yeah, he's he's some random tank. rookie. I've he's never heard of this guy. Tank. He was a sixth or seventh round. Tell. You can't do that. My eye. Oh. Could you explain yourself? Rough. Also, the only way, the only way Minnesota wins is when Kirk Cousins don't play well. <laughs> oh, look at uh, Donta Foreman. Yeah. Look at him. He's there. Um. Yeah, so Minnesota yeah, Vikings. There. Look above it's... him, though. Look at that stat line. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings nineteen, Chicago Bears thirteen from Soldier Field. Uh, Kirk Cousins twenty one for thirty one, one eighty one, one touchdown, no picks, two sacks, ninety three point six rating. A, a very average quarterback performance. You know, only 10 incompletions, 181 yards. That's pretty good. Only one touchdown, no picks. It's a good is day for though? Kirk Cousins. Is it though? What's wrong with that? He took only two sacks yeah, for negative seven yards. He threw no interceptions. He threw one touchdown and passed for 181 yards. Like, it's not eye-boggling, but at though. the same time, uh, uh, only lost That's an honest question. I don't only lost, lost one fumble. Okay. So he only turned the okay. ball over once, fumbles and interceptions, had a touchdown, and only missed 10 out of 31 attempts. So, not Listen, a bad day, not a like great this entire day. Episode. This week sucks I mean, ass. Andy, oh, don't like Andy Dalton numbers. That's just Andy Dalton numbers, you know? I, no, I feel like Andy Dalton could have done better in this game. He did do better, but there was it was a very average Andy Dalton day. Andy Dalton's and Kirk Cousins, in my mind, the same. Um, next up, Alexander Mattinson, 18 for 44. Uh, Kim Akers, 1 for 8 on the rushing. And then receiving, there weren't many people here. Either. TJ Hawkinson, 6 for 50. Uh, KJ Osborne, 4 for 48. Jordan Addison, 3 for 28. Uh, Alexander Mattinson, 4 for 28. Brandon Powell, 3 for 20. And Kim Akers, 1 for 7. Uh, yeah, Cam Akers, the Vikings now, only still not getting targeted at all. One target, one reception. Uh, for the Bears, Justin Fields was in to start. He went 6 for 10 for 58 yards, one interception, no touchdowns, a 5.8 average passing, four sacks, a 36.7 rating. He eventually left, bringing in uh, Tyson. Is it – how do you pronounce his last name? Badgett. 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 Yeah. Badgett. Tyson Badgett. 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 Uh, 10 for 14, 83 yards, no interceptions, 5.9 average, or sorry, no touchdowns, a 5.9 average, one interception, one sack, 56.5 rating. Um, also, a fumble lost by him as well. 
Uh, for rushing, uh, Dante Foreman, 15 for 65. Justin Fields, 8 for 46. Darrington Evans, 9 for 32. Uh, and receiving, DJ Moore, 5 for 51. Uh, Darnell Moody, uh, 2 for 48. Tyler Scott, 2 for 12. Robert Tunney, 1 for 11. Cole Komet, 2 for 9. Fellas Jones, 1 for 5. Dante Foreman, 1 for 2. Darrington Evans, 1 for 2. And Carey Blassingham, 1 for 1. Um, this was a cripple fight. <laughs> um, these are two teams that are struggling. If there's one thing the Bears could do that the Falcons cannot, is they filled out the seats. <laughs> yeah, fair. Oh. <laughs> Making that they got to make up that money for all the stuff that was stolen. Uh, oh. <laughs> that fucking zero turn <laughs> mowers, right, Gorlami? Love me a fucking Toro zero God turn, damn right, brother. Toro yeah. zero turn. Give me that fucking oh, zero God. turn Toro mower and that goddamn weed <laughs> wagger, brother. Need me that, need me zero that turn fertilizer for my yard. Zero turn. What fertilizer? What? Weed whacker. What? Weed and seed. Gear four by four. What? I think the Don't biggest the, thing from this is wagger. that. Someone, something from this, I think the takeaway, Kirk Cousins not waving his no trade clause as we saw means that I think the Vikings are considering trying to restart, which is interesting. You mean something they should have done three years ago? Yeah. Yeah, which as a Bengals fan uh, kind of interests my opinion because I'm like, if we can trade, I don't want to trade him, but if for some reason we can turn a few picks and T. Higgins into Justin Jefferson, I kind of like that oh, idea. Oh, interesting. Justin Jefferson has said many times he wants to play with the old Bayou Bengals, you know, his former teammates in Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. So that'd be an interesting oh, aspect to great. have. It would be great. I'd love to keep T. Higgins. Um, we couldn't get a contract deal done with him after we got Jamar and Joe Burrow set up. So we got to do something um, as far as yeah. figuring out a deal Take with him. Side street and grab Jefferson. Well, I think I mean, the, thing, the do... thing would be here is to trade him, is to do a if sign Minnesota... and trade. With if Minnesota. Minnesota does blow it up, that that is in the realm of possibility, I'd say, because his contract's coming up soon, right? T, this is T Higgins' uh, last year in his contract, I think. Yeah, if I'm looking at Justin Jefferson, if his, this is his last year on his contract, though, I mean, yeah, then he could easily resign with the Bengals, I think, if we can. I mean, I, but then you're gonna have to. Have time. It's gonna be a decent amount of change, but at the same time, like he'll probably take a little less, I'm guessing. Or is this his first contract? If he want. If he this wants is his to first play contract. Burrow, oh, this is his it's, first non-rookie contract. This is, yeah, this, is his, this is his rookie. Co- this is his rookie contract right now. Ooh. And don't know Vikings has yeah, picked up his fifth-year option, deal. which is twenty twenty-four. Is his fifth year. Oh, that like might that. not work. Oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh the Eagles did it. We can do it. Um, so <laughs> well, Harry Rose was a genius. You're dealing with the Bengals ownership. Duke, that's a problem. No, Duke Tobin took over as the leader as of the Bengals. It's no longer Mike Brown. Okay. So okay. there's okay. someone with. So you're telling brains. me there's a chance. Oh, there is a chance. <laughs> so yeah. you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. Um, there is a chance it could happen. Like, Justin Jefferson wants to. Is that means he's going to take less money? I don't know. Joe Burrow said he was going to take less money, and he took the entire GDP of Liechtenstein. I don't know. <laughs> So, uh, the Tigers will be back together. It, all the all then we need, all then we need, happen, all happen. we need then is I want Coach O from LSU to take over as the line coach. I don't even know who our line coach is. All I know, something's not right. And I, all I, I know, know is my line coach, coach, anymore. coach O from Louisiana State University, formerly the head coach of Louisiana State, looks like an O lineman coach. You cannot tell me you don't look at Coach O and hear him talk. Hey, we're gonna go down and we're gonna coach the Louisiana Good Tigers and we're gonna beat the Auburn. Don't come out of the Bayou. Don't come out of the Bayou. Don't come out of the Bayou. Like <laughs> that guy's a line coach through and through. It's like the. F- you remember when I'm up a blue chain? Why would you ask me? Why would you? I said they make good gumbo up there in Cincinnati. I'm gonna get over there. He he was a defensive coach, not an offensive. Oh yeah, but I mean, if you can coach a defensive line, you can coach an offensive line. You sort of think backwards anyway. Yeah, much. Much. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Seahawks Bengals. Speaking of the Bengals, we're here now. Uh, Seahawks Bengals final yeah. score 17 to 13. It was a good game in the kind of the first half for us, and then we trailed off in the second. Our offense kind of stalled, but our defense continued to play well the entire game, which I was proud of. The one yeah, thing I don't understand, you know, Smith's stat line, you'll be happy. Yeah. 
Geno Smith went 27 for 41, went three for 26, or went for 326 yards, an eight yard average passing. No touchdowns, two picks, four sacks. The front end of that stat line looks great. The second half doesn't, so it's a little weird. He's has a very average, like 69.8 rating. Um, I- Kenneth Walker, the third, ran for 62 yards on 19 carries and a touchdown, as well as Geno Smith ran for 40 or four times for 20 yards. Um, receiving Tyler Lockett six for ninety four, DK Metcalf four for sixty nine. Also, um, something's got to like I know they player test a lot. He's got to be on roids. This guy has so many temper tantrums in games. <laughs> it's so weird. Like you don't see other guys that are this angry, like Wait, all who? the time. DK Metcalf. There's a Metcalf. there was a play oh, yeah, where he, the he, ball he, didn't get thrown to him, and the next have play, you seen the man? yeah, then the next play he just takes our cornerback Cam Taylor Britt and just shoves him after the play. He's like he got Popeye's biscuit away from being a tight end. Yeah, like DK Metcalf is like has rage issues, which is weird as a like wide receiver. Like usually if there's one guy like Odell Beckham and Josh Norman will spark up or AJ Green like choking up that one Jaguars player, but like this is like every but, week with but... DK. But the difference mm-hmm. between Odell and them is that they aren't very big. And when they just throw a temper tantrum, it's a normal temper tantrum. This guy's yeah. out here bodying fucking corners. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Brock Lesnar whenever he loses a match. It's not like Odell yeah. spearing, uh, what the fuck's his name? Josh Norman. Norman. Josh Norman. Yeah, yeah, it's not like Odell spearing Norman. It's literally him grabbing guys and chucking them. Like, yeah. Just like. Also, uh, a good Either game for go see a fucking therapist. Yeah. Uh, a good game for Jackson Smith and Jigba, the rookie out of Ohio State, four for forty-eight for him. Also, very sad news. It's not Jake Boo Boo, it's Jake Bobo, which I'm very sad about. But Jake, oh, that's Bobo, kind of a funny one. Yeah, Jake Bobo, Honey Bobo, Honey Bobo, 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 Kobe Parkinson, 3 for 19, and Zach Charbonnet, 2 for 14. Uh, for the Bengals, Joe Burrow, 24 for 35, 185, 5.3 yard average, two touchdowns, one interception, three sacks, and 88.4 rating. Decent day from him. Not great, not horrible. Um, did look a lot better in the first half, didn't look good in the second half. Uh, Joe Mixon, not a great day for him on the ground. However, even with only with 38 yards and 12 carries, he did break into the top three in the Cincinnati Bengals' overall rushing yards. He's only now behind Corey Dillon and... Um, Oh, who is I, th- I think the other one's Rudy Johnson, I believe. I believe the other one's Rudy Johnson. Um, I couldn't remember. I, I knew the top one was Corey Dillon. So, um, uh, Jamar Chase was being receiver, six receptions, 80 yards. Tyler Boyd, seven for 38. Joe Mixon, three for 24. T. Higgins, two for 20. On limited minutes as well because he's still recovering from the rib injury. Um, the biggest thing about this is our defense. Logan Wilson, 11 total say, tackles. Your defense had the carry because you oh. lost in every stat line. Yeah, uh, Dax Hill was playing amazing at safety. Cam Taylor Britt even had a, uh, I believe, an interception as well. It's down here, yes. Interception for Cam Taylor Britt as well as Mike Hilton. No, uh, one was from Mike Hilton, uh, our, our slot corner. Um, as well, then uh, Sam Not Hubbard had five. Players. Sam Hubbard had five quarterback hits. Um, B.J. Hill had two and a game-winning sack. Um, Trey Henderson also had a quarterback hit and one sack. Um, I was also really impressed at, like, even though there were four sacks of Gino and three on Joe Burrow, it, I felt like the Seahawks line was holding up a lot better and we couldn't get as much pressure on them as we were they were getting on us. And the Seahawks' D-line is not exactly world-renowned. And the Bengals' D-line has DJ Reader, who They're is right. Pro Bowl level, and Trey Henderson, who's also Pro Bowl level, Sam Hubbard, who's looked better this year. So something's got to change with our... Uh, Something's got to change with our offensive line scheme, I feel like. so. But yeah, good win for them. Good first half win. Good second half. Hold on to the win, I guess. But yeah, Bengals, Bengals get the dub going into the bye week. It's nice to have a win for a bye week. I wish I could have that. Yeah. I mean, um, both teams were scared of the fucking end zone when they are in the red zone. Meanwhile, in Northern Ohio, um, what the f- fuck? I what? have no idea what happened here. Everything that really could go wrong thing. for San Fran went wrong. Yeah, San Francisco struggled from multiple injuries. It was raining. They're also a team that 
likes to run a lot of quick little passes and everything, which the rain does tamper with. And they lost to the backup quarterback. And they lost to PJ Walker, backup quarterback at the Cleveland Browns. Yes. Um, and they could have won on a game winning field goal well within range of Jake Moody. However, it set up from the left hash. He did shank or from the right hash. He did shank it right a little bit. And it just carried just so slightly off. That is his first miss of a point after or field goal attempt in the NFL on a game winning field goal. So that's one way, one hell of a way to miss it. But um, Jake Moody is going to come back. Oh no, he's going to come back from that. Like I don't know. I, I know oh, it's yeah. kind of kind of weird to say kicker revenge tour, but <laughs> he he's definitely that that's going to sit with him. Uh, as far as stats, I'm still go, I'm I'm still ready for McPherson to have his revenge tour. He did kind of go downhill a little after that first. He's season. coming back. He's coming back. I have yeah. him on my fantasy team. He's coming back. I mean, yeah. It's kind of uh, hard when your offense can't get past the fifty yard line. Yeah, trust the process, bro. Uh, Brock Purdy went twelve for twenty seven for one twenty five, one touchdown, one pick, a four point six average, three sacks, a fifty five point three rating. His probably his obviously his first regular season loss, and also his first kind of eh, stat line. It was his first bad yeah. game. Yeah, non uh, injured, yeah. non injured. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, your wing is getting ripped off here. I'm going to have a bad game. Uh, Christian McCaffrey only carried 43 yards and 11 carries, followed by Jordan Madsen, 27 for 5, Raymond McLeod, 23 for 2, and Debo Samuel, 11 for 2. In the passing, uh, Brandon Ayuk only four receptions for 76 yards on 10 targets. Juwan Jennings, 2 for 26. Christian McCaffrey, 3 for 9. Kyle Juszczyk, 1 for 9. Nobody over that had over 5 yards receiving. Um, for the Browns, P.J. Walker, 18 for 34 for 192. Two interceptions, two sacks, no touchdowns, and a 45.2 rating. Uh, um, Jerome Ford, 84 for 17 on the ground. Kareem Hunt, 47 for 12. or Sorry, 17 for 84. Then Kareem Hunt, 12 for 47. Marquise Goodwin, 1 for 20. Elijah Moore, 1 for 8. P.J. Walker, 3 for 1. For the receiving column, Amari Cooper had a field day, 4 for 101. Eight, uh, Kareem Hunt three for twenty four, David Njoku three for twenty four, Elijah Moore four for nineteen, Jerome four two for seven, and David Bell one for six, as well as Marquise Goodwin one for four. Another thing, another Ohio team, another defensive performance. Uh, the defense was um, very, very, very high performing. They were able to force six quarterback hits and three sacks, um, as well as five tackle for losses. That Cleveland defense is no joke, and they won this game for the Browns straight up. Okay, I mean, at least Brock Purdy's weenus held up. <laughs> Actually, you could say this is the first uh, regular season game Brock Purdy lost. It is, yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Also, they also, had injuries because, you know, McCaffrey and... McCaffrey, uh, Samuel. Debo, yeah. Yeah, um, he, Williams. George also, Kittle worried would, about Little Caesars. I had to too much. Right? I know it's six games in, but here's Cleveland's defense. They've only given up 200 yards per game for six in to, six total games. They yeah, they can defense, break the that record. defense is scary. That they can break the be, they can break the record of like the 2000 Ravens who gave up 245 yards, the Broncos and the Bears 1985 Bears. Here's the funny thing, I would totally not be surprised if they break the record and don't make the playoffs. Oh yeah, that's a possibility. Because I could totally see, you know, they could not break the record Defense until lose games because they could let up 10 yards on a certain, you know, drive, but that drive could start from the 10 because Deshaun Watson threw a pick or their offense can't get anything. AJ Walker. Yeah. You so the AFC, AFC North is a what the fuck? It's wide right open. Now. It is wide Very open. Weird. Anyone could win it except, I mean, the Steelers could, but I feel like they're the least likely. They're having a lot of issues, um, but we'll see. It's wide open. It honestly is wide open. So, But again, San Francisco Not lost the game. Open. That's Not the first loss open. of the season, so they have to definitely fix Mar a couple Mar things. But... I think it was just a bad game for them. Everything went wrong, went wrong for them. And weather didn't help. You had injuries. They're still up. God, it's scary. It. Either Detroit or the Dolphins are the best team in the league. That is weird. Being as a guy that remembers when, like, Detroit and Miami were some of the worst teams, that's weird to say. Oh, um, yeah. Mm. Miami 42, like, we Carolina 21. Dead. At least some things never change. The Panthers still suck. 
Yeah. Bryce Young, 23 for 38 for 217, 5.7 average, one touchdown, four sacks, 85.1 rating. Uh, on the ground, Chuba Hubbard, 88 yards on 19 carries and a touchdown, followed by Raheem Blackshear, 18 for five, or five for 18. Adam Thielen. Well, that's where Blackshear proving, went. Uh, Adam Thielen proving to still be a good receiver in the league. He was leading the Panthers in receiving uh, 11 for 115 in the Ooh. touchdown. DJ. Uh, I don't think he had Kirk, to prove that, though. Three for 26. I mean, yeah. kind of. He kind of started to get lost a little no. bit with Jefferson no. and now Hawkinson coming in. Nope. Mm. I knew it. Deep His down, age. I knew it. Nope. I mean, He's white. He lives forever. <laughs> Hunter Renfro is basically invisible now on the Ra Raiders. Essentially, yeah. So it's all just passes to Myers or Adams. Yeah. <laughs> um Tommy Tramble, two for twenty five, Jonathan Mingo, two for twenty one, Hayden Hurst, one for sixteen, LaVisca Chenault Jr. three for fifteen, and uh, Raheem Blackshear one for four. For the Dolphins, Tua Tonga Vailoa, twenty one for thirty one for two sixty two at eight point five average, three touchdowns, a one twenty six point zero rating. Woo! Mike White also came in and attempted one pass and was in interception. Poor so. Mike White. God damn it. Poor Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike uh, White. We trusted White. you to be Tannehill. He had a, I think he had some conversation with McDaniels on the sideline. And we, it was just like a super chill conversation uh, with Mike White after the interception. He's like, yeah, you know, I, it pisses me off, but it's okay, man. Yeah. It's like some shit like that. You're still um, better than Tannehill. <laughs> Raheem Mosert, 17 for 115 and two touchdowns on the ground. Chris Brooks, 6 for 28. Uh, Salvan Ahmed, 6 for 23. Then for receiving Tyreek Hill, 6 for 163 and a touchdown. Dylan Waddle, 7 for 51. Braxton Berrios, 2 for 20. And Raheem Mosert, 3 for 17 and a touchdown. So, um, Miss Miami Dolphins offense is starting to look like the greatest show on turf throwbacks. Like they can run the ball, they can pass the ball, they can do most anything. And their defense is good enough. And so yeah, if they keep this, so. if they keep this pace, they will break the Broncos' record of how many yards by like three hundred or four hundred yards. So you're thinking that, that the defense that. and offensive overall yardage allowed and caused is going to be broken in the same season? You think? Wait, which it Broncos? Can be the 2015 or the 2014 uh, or 2015? Okay. Yeah, over seven thousand. Peyton Manning, Manning calling like thirty audibles a play and sending yeah. everyone on specific like, hot routes. Did, the Dolphins are on track to be almost 8,000 yards this season. Tyreek Hill has almost 1,000 yards by six games. He has almost, yeah. he has like 863. He crazy. could break the 2,000 like, yards. I felt like not carrying attitude. Mc, um, what's his name? McDaniel. McDaniel has. I mean, five and one, you're destroying people. <laughs> Mc, the Dolphins Five and one, you look like you're not even fucking trying. I mean, the D Dolphins gave up 14 points in the first quarter. They were toying their food. That's basically what it was. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, boy. Dolphins are scary. I would definitely say that they are the most potent offensive team um, right now. It could be a toss-up with the Niners, but the Niners have to be healthy with something that's against them. Um, so, But defense will win you that championship. Up. You let up 21 and to Carolina. That might not help you out when you're playing. Or you did, did not survive in and do ball after he left. Yeah. Um, 37, the final score. 37 to 20, the final score. Jacksonville beats Indianapolis by 17. Uh, the Colts. Minchumania. Minchumania didn't do the greatest. He, uh, this is an insane amount of passing attempts. 33 for 55. 329 yards, a six-yard average, one touchdown, three picks, three sacks, a 60.3 rating. They only rushed the ball about 17 times. Seven for Zach Moss with 21 ball. yards. Well, eight. that's the thing about that because I was seeing this. I watched a good chunk of this game while I was at work, and the way that the Jaguars were like setting up their offense, they had all four guys up front. They had all their whole front seven, four wide up front, and all the pass rush in the back. You can't run through that with that off with that defensive line. Especially with Two the hands on, on the ball, tuck your head and go. Something's got to I mean, happen. I don't know. Wing T, eye back, wing eye T, formation. They, they, they didn't even try I, that with that, which I didn't do understand. The I think the do, the, do the Colts have? Do the Colts have a running or a fullback? Can you throw yeah. an eye form at him and just send a fullback through at the beginning? Really, I mean, both Taylor and Moss are essentially halfbacks. So. Mm. I remember my dad running the wing T in the 2000s. Holy shit. Yeah. Eesh. It was good for the 60s. 
Uh, Indianapolis receiving Michael Pittman Jr. 9 for 109. Uh, Kylan Granson, 3 for 67. Jonathan Taylor, 5 for 46. Zach Moss, 6 for 38. Alec Pierce, 3 for 25. Isaiah McKenzie, 2 for 23. Josh Downs, 5 for 21. Um, and then for the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, 20 for 30. Oh, ooh, excuse me. Um, 181, six yard average, two touchdowns, one interceptions, three sacks, a 91.1 rating. Pretty good game from him. Uh, ETN Jr., 18 for 50, five yards on the ground, and two touchdowns. Dernis Johnson, one rush for 19 yards, and Trevor Lawrence, three for 15. Receiving, not many people in this receiving column. Christian Kirk, 3 for 49 and touchdown. Evan Ingram, 7 for 41. Calvin Ridley, 4 for 30. Travis Etienne, 3 for 28. Braxton, uh, uh, Brenton Strange, 2 for 27. And Tank Bigsby, 1 for 6. So, good performance from the Jaguars. Um, I think the main as- aspect for them is they were a much more balanced attack. Uh, they didn't have to do as many yards. They only had 85 total yards of rushing and 181 of passing. Um, but three oh, interceptions. Three, three interceptions. Three interceptions from Gardner Minshew. Minshew uh, mania. And a, and a fumble. Yeah. And a fumble. And a fumble. So there was a, yeah, a 21, 24 yard, a 21 yard return from these interceptions. So that really helped seal the deal against the Colts, um, yeah. who definitely are struggling right now after seeing a very hopeful and upside looking Anthony Richardson quarterback go out. Well, the historically, the, the Colts have also Anthony not really you know, played well in football either. So they were kind of – I kind of knew they were going to walk into here with a loss and even before. This is the ninth straight game they lost at Duval. Yeah. It's it's bad. Like, that's 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 what's nuts. Good catch. Yep. Uh, go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, but da, 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 let's I, just go realized, I did not watch many of these games. Watch watched this one decent bit. Uh, just because I, I, just the... because just because I am believing in CJ Stroud now, so I am watching their games. The Texans look good, actually. That's the weird thing. They do. The Texans actually look good. Unfortunately, he had his uh no interception streak broken. Yeah, streak. his interception streak was but broken. The Saints, but then the Saints fumbled, and Houston got the ball back yeah. on the fumble. Mm-hmm. So, final score, 13-20. to 20. Houston wins against the Saints from Houston. C.J. Stroud, 13-27 for 27 for 199 to 7.4 average. Two touchdowns, one pick, two sacks, 82.2 rating. The, the weirdest thing is, is, it's weird for me to say this, like, I'm not used to calling and looking at games and saying, oh, Houston won, interesting. Like, I'm used to saying, oh, Houston lost, moving on. Like, this no, is weird to see weird. them winning games. Like, people say, oh, the worst, you know... NFL team the last you know it's been the Lions or like you know the Browns like the Texans man they've been so bad we forgot they existed I bet you if you told a bunch no, of people to name all 32 NFL teams Houston would always be the last one to be brought up even no, when think they made Texas, the playoffs Texas I forgot they made the playoffs dumb. yeah I know it it dumb dumb as as how bad they were aren't they also like the newest team yes. they are at 2004 and they just I mean, haven't just, done anything. So that's probably why I think they're irrelevant. I mean, like, they already have a Hall of Famer, I think. They have a, I don't know. I think, they have I think Andre two, Johnson. But... Well, I know that. I, mean, I guess they could have. An, I mean, they have Ed Reed. Yeah, they have. And then TJ Watt will, will be in the Any Hall, Hall of Famers they, they have are only Watt, because Watt. they didn't start their Hall of Fame career. Well, all Andre the Johnson, well, I feel like. Watt. He's definitely going to get in the Hall. JJ, yeah, JJ Watt, Texans, yeah, JJ would probably get in, and I think Andre Johnson should get in. Andre could probably get in. Yeah, I think. I mean, hey, I think Ocho Cinco should get in just because it's Chad Ocho Cinco. There's three didn't, three constants well, in life. Three constants well, wanted, in life. I think he won a ring when he was with us, so that nope. he definitely could make. Did he not win? Nope. Uh, huh. There are three constants in life: I mean, you're death, death, taxes, and eighty-five. Going to be wide the fuck open. <laughs> Um, Look, so, I think the only way I think Ed the only way Ojo Reed. Cinco makes the Hall of Fame is if he yeah. comes back as a kicker. Ed Reed is a Hall of Famer from the Texans. Yes, but a good chunk of the guys you could argue that are former Texans that should be in the Hall of Fame, they started their Hall of Fame career on other things. Like Ed Reed's more known as the savior in Baltimore, like or uh, or like Vince Wilfork. Like he was a big piece of the Texans defense, and he was a Patriot for most of his career. Yeah. Uh, so really, JJ Watt. Yeah, JJ Watt's probably the only one that's from, a, like, that was like Houston. day one. A, he won a Texan. He's probably the only. He and Andre Johnson are probably the only ones that were like day one Texans that could probably make the Hall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Devin Singletary on the ground, 12 for 58. Damian Pierce, 13 for 34. Xavier Hutchinson, 2 for 15. Mike Boone, 1 for 11. Receiving Nico Collins, 4 for 80. Dalton Schultz, 4 for 61. And a touchdown, Noah Brown, 2 for 27. Brevin Johnson, 1 for 11. Robert Woods, 1 for 6. Uh, for the Saints, Derek Carr, 32 for 50 for 353. 7.1 average, one touchdown, one pick, two sacks, and 83.2 rating. Decent day from him. Alvin Kamara, 19 for 68. Rashid Shahid, 2 for 18. Derek Carr, 1 for 2. Those are all on the ground. Um, for receiving, Chris Olave, 7 for 96. Rashid Shahid, 2 for 85. Taysom Hill, 7 for 49. Michael Watch Thomas, uh, 5 for 45. Alvin Kamara, 7 for 36. Foster Morrow, 4 for 33. One and Kendra Miller won for 13. Only passing touchdown reception or receiving touchdown was from Rashid. Uh, Rashid, Rashid Shahid. Rashid Shahid. Rashid. <laughs> it looks like Rashid. Has anyone figured yeah. out what is a Taysom Hill yet? I don't no. know, man. He's just a football yeah, player. I gotta say at least once. Every, every oh, time. Oh, Masson, you're, Masson, you're supposed to be our local expert here. What is a Taysom Hill? Dude, even I don't know. All right, the battle between the Patriots and the second-hand Patriots ends in the second-handers mm-hmm. winning. For Vegas the, wins 21-17 the, the, from Allegiant. Sloppy the, seconds so get the victory. Patri- the Patriots miss Jesus Jacoby Christ. Myers for getting Juju Smith-Schuster, who d- they barely for use. For the exact same contract, yes, I am aware. Uh, Mac Jones, 24 for 33 for 200 yards. 6.1 average, zero touchdowns, one pick, three sacks, 75.3 rating. Um, Roger Stevenson, 10 for 46 and a touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, 7 for 34 and a touchdown. But hey, we scored touchdowns for once. Fucking yeah. hell. Ezekiel Elliott scored you a touchdown. How do you feel? I feel nothing. Yeah. Uh, receiving. Look, um, Ramondre scored me points. That's all I care about. Yeah. Kendrick Bourne, 10 for 89. Mike Gusecki, 3 for 28. Ramondre Stevenson, 5 for 24. Farrah Brown, 1 for 15. Ezekiel Elliott, 1 for 15. Ty Montgomery, 1 for 9. Um, then we go to oh, the Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo, 14 for 22 for 162 yards, 7.4 average, one touchdown, one pick, an 82.0 rating. Eventually, Brian Hoyer came in for the injured Garoppolo, 6 for 10 for 102, a 10.2 average, no touchdowns, no picks, no sacks, a 94.6 rating. For rushing, Josh Jacobs, 25 for 77, uh, Trey Tucker, 1 for 4, Jimmy Garoppolo, 2 for 4, and Sierra Mayer White, 2 for 3. Uh, for receiving, Michael Mayer, why is he not a Bengal Duke Tobin? Fuck! Uh, 5 for 75. Jacoby Myers, 5 for 61 in the touchdown. Trey Tucker, 2 for 57. Devontae Adams, 2 for 29. Austin Hooper, 2 for 19. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 2 for 16. Zamir White, 2 for 7. Uh, and that was the end of their receiving column there. Um, well, look, Jacoby Myers got a touchdown Adams, on our Raiders. They Patriots made Adams game, irrelevant. I mean, that's Josh McDaniels for you. Yeah, like he, yeah, like Adams has like been complaining recently about like how irrelevant he feels in the offense. Like, what do you expect? Like, McDaniel's is definitely going to favor all his favorite Patriots he used to work with. Yeah, and the and the Even Gronk, the Vontae, and the Gronk the clone he drafted receiver. as well. This game fucking sucked. Like, it was bad. All but, the games uh, fucking sucked this week. That's why I feel nothing with this loss. Ugh. It's just gonna be like rah, 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 on the uh, ball. Yeah, so, uh, so same old, same old. Um, yep. Yay. We'll talk about this. Uh, Cardinals nine Rams, 26 big blowout from SoFi stadium. Otherwise known as South candlestick, uh, Joshua Dobbs, 21 for 41 for two thirty-five, a 5.7 average, no touchdown, one pick, two sacks, a 58.5 rating, uh, in the rushing column. Uh, he also ran seven for 47 as their lead rusher. Count to Ingram, followed him for 10 for 40, Damian Williams, eight for 36 and Amari Demarcado two for 11. Remember, uh, Connor is still out with a knee injury from last week's game. Um, for receiving Michael Wilson, three for 62, Trey McBride, four for 62, Marquise Brown, four for 34, Rondell Moore, four for 30, Zach Ertz, two for 22 and Count Ingram, two for 11. For the Rams, Matthew Stafford, 15 for 24 for 226, a 9.4 average, one touchdown, three sacks, a 107.3 rating. Uh, rushing, Kieran Williams, 20 for 158 and a touchdown. Great day from him. Zach Evans, 4 for 10. Ronnie Rivers, 3 for 9. Matthew Stafford, 1 for 2. For receiving, Cooper Cup, 7 for 148 and a touchdown, nine targets. Uh, He's two finally two, back. Yeah, 2 to a 12 at Williams 1 for 30. Williams had more fucking um, rushing one. yards and Jesus. Yeah. Um, Puka Run the Nakua, team ball, baby. Yeah, Puka Nakua, four for twenty six and on seven targets. Tyler Higby two for eighteen, and Ronnie Rivers one for four. Not many people that were past you, but not many people need to pass you. And one goes for one forty eight, the other goes for thirty, and one goes for twenty six. Um, so 
great day for the Rams, really just getting the job done in spectacular fashion against the Cardinals. Well, hey, really hey, 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 who, who knew the Rams can run the damn ball? Who knew? <laughs> Rams can run the damn ball. <laughs> Sean McVay is a very good play caller. Like, let's just let's just remember. Yeah. Let's well just. I think we just need to remember where that one win of the Cardinals came from. The boys. Because well, I'm I mean, just checking this. I'm boys. just checking to see if y'all still the boys. But you lost to a team that's one in five. Also, yeah. okay. I see so much it hype. Just... Oh, go ahead, Mastin. Go ahead. The Cardinals are the best bad team this year. It, it's weird. They don't have the talent. No, I get what you're getting at. But they're like the twenty the best bad team. They're like the twenty twenty. They're like the twenty twenty one Detroit Lions. They were bad, but goddamn, will they f- try to fuck up your day? Yeah, I mean, like it's the true. Cardinals. There's no no battle. So well, look at the other bad teams. No so Patriots, I mean, Bears, Broncos, so are, Panthers. Yeah, Vikings, we're talking about State. rating bad teams, right? We're talking about rating bad teams. You know, there's uh, uh wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that, that the the Cardinals will give you a challenge. They're not gonna make it easy on you. They just don't oh, yeah. they don't have the yeah. talent, but yeah. it's oh. not an easy win any right I mean, now. I gotta hand it to Dobbs. He doesn't say quit. He doesn't die. It's he like a Wolverine. It's just gonna be constantly fighting. It's not quite like it's probably yeah. not gonna beat something that's Their like five doesn't times fully size, reflect but... how they operate when they play. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. one thing I don't understand is people are saying, Oh, you know, Kyler Murray's almost back. You know, Kyler Murray's gonna be ready soon. Like what does that change? Really? Nothing. Because really? Call it, mm-hmm. Modern nothing. Warfare 3 is coming out soon. It changes nothing. Yeah, he's going to call out with an illness. Just just get pres- I, like eighth prestige all day. I'll see what happens when he comes back because I kind of think it was Cl- Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury being the shit coach also. Yeah. I feel like yeah, it's a combination. That could affect a lot. Uh, co- yeah, it could be a combination, but... I don't, know. I don't know. Who the fuck was that one quarterback that gained a shit ton of weight? All right, well. We're we going to get that out of uh, kind of Murray. Hey, uh, Matt, <laughs> you're going to hear this question now. Could you explain yourself? You lost shit. There's, to there's Zach. No explaining it. Fucking you lost Wilson. 45 <laughs> fucking pass attempts to you 22 lost. rushes. You lost to the Mill Hunter himself. Donna's his for the night, dude. Less than two minutes left. It's a third down. Why the fuck are we throwing into double coverage? Irrelevant. You still lost to Zach Wilson. I don't. Yeah, I know. No, no. I'm pissed. I'm fucking pissed at the Eagles. And the yeah. secondary is fucking. The secondary is basically USFL players right now because of the injuries. Yeah. Yeah. That's really uh, funny. Final score, <laughs> New York Jets 20, Philadelphia Eagles 14. Jalen Hurts 28 for 45 for 280, 6.2 average, one touchdown, three picks, two sacks, and a 59.5 rating. Uh, he also was their leading rusher for 47 uh, yards on eight carries and a touchdown. Uh, DeAndre Swift 10 for 18 on the ground as well as Kenneth Gamble 2 for 13. Only 80 yards of total rushing. Um, on, for, only 22 fucking rushing attempts. Yeah, uh, squared to 45 passing, as you said before. Uh, receiving AJ Brown, 7 for 131. Devontae Smith, 5 for 44. Dallas Goddard, 5 for 42. DeAndre Swift, 8 for 40. And Boston Scott, 1 for 14. Uh, only t- can bang them. Yeah, DeAndre Swift only was the only one with a receiving touchdown. For the Jets, Zach Wilson, 19 for 33 for 186. A 5.6 average, no touchdowns, no picks, 5 sacks, 7 point, 73.5 rating. Um, He's got a higher rating than Jalen Hurts. Yeah, and he had a higher rating than Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Yeah. Is he slowly becoming better? I don't think so, but I maybe be proved no, wrong soon. No. I don't know. Brees Hall, the only 12. Thing that was do- the only thing that was doing well for the Eagles was the defensive line. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to not be good with that line. Like, Jordan Davis is saying... four people alone. But weren't you also missing, like, Jalen Carter and uh... – and uh, Lane fucking, Johnson got hurt. Lane Johnson, Lane Johnson got hurt. I know. I mean, he's like eighty-five at this point. <laughs> Look, I just he played through. Funny that it was the Jets. The, the loss was the Jets. This is me to fuck off. Uh, oh, Brees Hall, the undefeated so against the Jets. 
Yeah. Yeah. Brees yeah. Hall ran for 39 yards and 12 carries and a touchdown. Xavier Gibson, one for 18. Zach Wilson, four for 15. And Dalvin Cook, three for 12. For receiving, Garrett Wilson, eight for 90. Brees Hall, five for 54. Tyler Conklin, three for 24. Al Lazard, one for eight. Jeremy Ruckert, one for eight. And Dalvin Cook, one for two. Um, yeah, very defensive, defensive-minded game. Um, so I think the biggest thing with this is that the Jets were able to kind of tough it out where it mattered, which obviously was beating an Eagle secondary that is struggling through injuries right now. Also, Nick Sirianni be a fucking dumbass. Yeah. Rough, rough Here way to end the undefeated season. But again, only one loss could be In much fairness. worse. Yeah, it's, extremely, five and one. Me, me, me. it's extremely hard to go undefeated. I think the last team that got close was that weird year the Steelers had a couple years ago where they went 11-0 and and then just tanked and yeah. just like, hit the bed the rest of the year. You're gonna Here's lose one, all right? Just one. Yeah, but well, no, we're but two and three, Eagles, motherfucker. But the past three one games, five. Eagles, the Eagles been showing like the Eagles should have won handily a couple times. You're sitting next to a guy who's got your record inverted, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, this was an interesting game um, for multiple reasons. One that the Lions look really good. The other, creamsicle uniforms. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were wearing their old throwback, like early Mike Alsot creamsicle day uniforms. They were and great just look. like in those days, they played like it. They melted in the competition. Yeah. Uh, Detroit Lions 20, yeah, they Tampa felt, Bay. They felt the fear of the line of Dory Campbell. That was so unintelligible. I, oh my he God. He your Dan Campbell impression sucks ass, Gorlami. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> it's it's going to be neat. All right, look, we're going to bite a kneecap on the way up. We're going to go back down. We're going to bite another kneecap. It's going to take three or four punches to knock us down. We're going to get back like up and Steve do it Austin again. Impression. What? I mean, they're the same guy. Look at them. They're the same guy. They really look are. at them. Goatee. I don't care if you got three legs or one ass cheek. I will beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that was a good quote from him. Beat your ass on SmackDown oh. Friday. What? What? Anyway, uh, Goff uh, went 30 for 44 for 535, an eight yard average, two touchdowns, no picks, three sacks, a 107.5 rating, another amazing performance under the radar from Goff. 535, you mean 353? Oh, yeah, 353, not 535. Oh, sorry, 353. Dude, if, a, if a quarterback got 535, that would be insane. I think that's that happened before. Any Sophomore season, Jared Goff, is that you? I feel like <laughs> quarterback is that you? 20, uh, oh, 2018, that's the third year. Uh, rushing, Craig Reynolds, 10 for 15. David Montgomery, 4 is 6 for 14. And Divi uh, Divine, Ozzy, Gobo. Play anybody but your first-round draft pick, basically. Detroit Lions at running back. Uh, receiving, Amon Ross St. Brown, 12 for 124 and a touchdown. Jameson Williams, 2 for 53 and a touchdown. Josh Reynolds, 3 for 50. Sam Laporta, 4 for 36. Craig Reynolds, 2 for 28. Cliff Raymond, 3 for 23. And Dave Montgomery, 1 for 19. For the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield, 19 for 37 for 206, a 5.6 average, no touchdowns, one pick, one sack, 56.8 average. Not a great day, a lot of incompletions for him. Ricard White on the ground, 7 for 26. Keyshawn Vaughn, 6 for 9. Baker Mayfield, 2 for 6. And Devin Tom, uh, Tompkins, 1 for 5. For receiving, Chris Godwin, 6 for 77. Mike Evans, 4 for 49. Uh, Trey Palmer, 2 for 47. K. Dotton, 1 for 15. Ricard White, 3 for 12. Uh, Payne Durham, 1 for 8. Um... This was just a dominant performance by the Lions on both sides of the ball, causing a couple turnovers, really yeah. limiting the rushing attack from the Tampa Bay, and stopping Baker from feeling comfortable in the pocket. And then their offense was just clicking on multiple different levels. They had two touchdowns in this, uh, and two uh, drives that ended in three. So their offense does need some work, but again, time at the same time they were struggling from injuries. And that stat line from Jared Goff is just really almost near perfect. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, you're playing the Lions that have been on fire this year. It's kind of I wouldn't look read too much into it about about this if you're a Bucks fan. Uh, I think the Lions are up there being the best team in the league. I would still put them below the Dolphins, the Eagles, and the Niners. The mm -hmm. only good team in the NFC North. I LA can't yeah, believe I'm saying that. To be the the I can't believe I'm saying good. that. Yeah, they're. Yeah. That's I'm very apt for Eberflus, by the way. You, they might be you know for what? a couple of years, too, with how... They're young. The yeah, they're very young. So, yeah. So, yeah. Someone and please Jared look at the meme I just put. I kind of saw it. I, I mean, Jared yeah. Goff is not old, either. Like, he's still... Like, he's almost 30. He's still going to be in his prime, and he's showing his... He's young, what he he's young from but his, a QB. 
Oh, God. yeah, and from fuck from his 2018. You know what's funny? We yeah, all fuck saw... this game. Fuck, I don't want. God damn it, just fuck this. Can game. we can we just skip this game? It, this was uh, we have to talk about on. it. Oh. This is yeah. such a weird game. A Sunday night game. The entirety of the NFL. Yeah, we finally got one. The entirety of the Sunday Night Football crew and the and eighty six percent of all Americans that were voted on it picked Buffalo to win this, and it seemed like it was going to be a handily one victory. The game came down to the final play, where the New York Giants were robbed, honestly, of another play after that, after an egregious passing uh, defensive pass interference call was missed. They almost had a chance to tie the game up. Or um, they were only down five, so it's actually not to tie the game, to win the game. Um, so the Buffalo... I'll be honest, it would have been funnier if the game ended on the exact same way halftime ended. <laughs> yeah. Um, where, they the, where they are on the goal line, just let time expire. Yeah. Giants were on the goal line, let time expire during the second half, then they're on the goal line at the end of the or the first half, and then at the se- end of the second half, they're on the goal line again, try to get a pass in. It was an egregious holding call that should have been pass interference, and it wasn't set up. Or it wasn't, they weren't given the call. So... Yeah. Uh, it's just like Buffalo. How do you struggle this bad? I mean, you won the game, yes, but fuck me, dude. Like the Giants, really? You almost gave them a two and four record, and you only won by five at home. Oh. Or no, sorry, also, not home. Not... in in Orchard Park. Like, or no, they were also, at home. That is a to... stadium. At home. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know what could have helped the Giants win? Also, by not doing that fucking audible. At the first half, ended the first half to do a run play when you have no timeouts, eight seconds left in the game to do a run play and yeah, waste that eight seconds. You missed a few, so you could get a field goal and probably instead of trying to go for a touchdown, get a field goal at the end of the game. No stats. I'm not even talking about them. Damn it. Yeah, that was just you chargers. No, and then also, this was like, a Tyron Monday Taylor. Night, you're Tyron Taylor. You're smarter than that. I think you would be. Uh, and then the Monday night game, Dallas Michael Cowboys Lance. 20, Los Angeles Chargers 17. Uh, Dak Prescott 21 for 30 for 272, a 9.1 average, one touchdown, no picks, a five sacks, and a 109.3 rating. Uh, he was also their leading rusher somehow, 40 yards and seven carries and a touchdown. Tony Pollard 15 for 30, Brandon Cooks 1 for 14, and Rico Dwaddle 3 for 12. Uh, receiving CD Lamb 7 for 117, Tony Pollard 6 for 80, Brandon Cooks 4 for 36, Michael Gallup 3 for 24, Jake Ferguson 1 for 15. For the Chargers, Justin Herbert 22 for 37, 227 yards uh, in total, 6.1 average, two touchdown, one pick, one sack, and 84 rating. Austin Eckler was uh, their lead rusher with only 27 yards on 14 carries, followed by Justin Herbert for 6 for 20. Um, yeah. Receiving Keenan Allen seven for eighty five and a touchdown. Joshua Hummer four for sixty. Austin Eckler four for thirty five. Donald Parham Jr. two for nineteen. Jared Everett three for sixteen and a touchdown. And Justin Herbert actually received one of his own passes for a first down. Um, yep. uh, weird game. Just both teams yeah, kind of going is... back and forth, struggling offensively, not because of defense, but because of their own ineptitude. And then yeah, the but... Dallas Cowboys just had a, I think, just a. A little, a few more weapons, honestly, and were able to pull it out that way. Their defense also looks much better than the Chargers' defense, who right now just seems to be Khalil Mack, Bosa, and a couple other was, guys that don't really look that great at the moment. It was honestly just kind of a irrelevant game for me. Like the only interest I think anybody actually showed in was this lady that I just sent in chat, the one that they kept sh- kept showing off. At oh my god! Some oh, reason that yeah, that everyone yeah. thinks she's a plant because there's a picture from a couple of years ago of her in, her in a Vikings jersey and face paints. Just because she likes the Vikings and oh my god! No, the story was I mean, is I, that I, I like the I like you're the watching bar, Monday night game and all of a sudden they pan to this one lady who's like super into the game. She's got her glasses on and just is like this. Eventually takes her glasses off and is like, "What's going on?" They get a touchdown. She's hands up in the air like just elation, and then they lose and she's depressed again. And like, who is yeah, this? Like they're showing this like fan. Multiple times, like who is this? Colting her multiple times. People are like it's got to be a plant. I don't know who she is. They eventually find another picture of someone that looks like her. It apparently is her wearing a Vikings jersey, Vikings face paint. Oh, she's got to be a plant. Turns out her son then plays for the Vikings, like a youth football team called the Vikings, and she actually was supporting him because in the background of the picture, oh. it's an empty stadium. There's like forty people there max. The 
players look a little smaller. It makes sense. Okay. And then she gets okay. on the Pat McAfee show, and people are saying, oh, it's totally a plant. Now that she's in the same jersey, she has a bunch of helmets behind her. There's got to be a way that's a plant that people look into it further. And it's this conspiracy theory that makes you want to put tinfoil on your head. It's so weird. Like, why would you go in this far into thinking if it's a plant or not? It's the Chargers. I wouldn't put him past him to do a plant. I don't care if it I, is I, a plant or not. It's it was a funny thing to see this this lady go crazy and watch the elation and sadness of football happen before her in real time. I'll say nothing about now. I, I chalk up this um, conspiracy theory to the same people that watch Infowars that actually believe putting chemicals in the water turns frogs gay. God yeah. damn it, Kadoff. But what I'm about to say is, why go after her? Go after ESPN. Just be no. Go after the dumbasses. Chargers. Go to the yeah, Chargers. Yeah, Chargers. If the Chargers hired a plant, and you're the ones that moved away from San Diego, you have mm. the target on your head. You're the idiot. You, you know, can't get actually, fans. Well, yeah. If you can't okay, get fans okay. in L.A., you shouldn't be there. Holy fuck. You know, there's fuck. something else that I was actually seeing that, like, after the game, there was, like, a bunch of Chargers fans getting in a fight. They were saying that there were plants in the in the guys that were instigating the fights <laughs> that were all Chargers fans. I mean, we all know Is for there a actually fact a real that Chargers fan in when L.A.? When the Chargers left San Diego, actually, not even before that, when Philip Rivers left the Chargers, he took half the fan base, his immediate family, because there's like 37 Riverses in that family, <laughs> and that's half of the fucking fan base of the Chargers. Yeah. It, so, it half of those were his own kids. It's honestly sad to me, too, because like the Chargers, it, I, I kind of had some respect for the Chargers. My my grandfather on my mom's side actually was a welder that built their stadium when, back in the day. Uh, and just seeing them like leave that and leave, seeing their old stadium just like Look, rusting in pieces, just kind of. Just Maja, I got, I got one comment for this game. Okay. Uh, Cowboys, how the fuck do you only win by three against Chargers coaching? I really, because especially when one of them is your old coach, Kellen Moore is the OC. These, in mother, LA. these motherfuckers lost to the Vikings. Or yeah. beat the Vikings. Also, I feel bad for Herbert. People were comparing him and Burrow a lot and now like burrow's obviously like climbing a lot more and then herbert's just kind of uh, is it like a is it like, like a can tim allen just, i feel like it's a tim allen the santa claus thing where justin herbert just cursed to become the new philip rivers yeah oh. like five it's years always... he's not gonna be sweary he's gonna have eight kids it, there's it's only crazy. so much that herbert can do with that fucking team yeah. I think he's he really actually only a good has been an alien as a receiver. After Mike Williams got hurt, yeah, yeah. It, the that motherfucker is so shit. injury prone. Fuck you, Spanos. But we are, we yeah, say it every time. Puchos Madre Spanos. Moving on. One word from for the Chargers: pain. Pain. All right, so we've covered well. Uh, do we need to cover the week five Thursday night game? We start with that. Uh, no, we didn't. We week. covered we covered that already. We'll, we'll save yeah. that for next week. So we, yeah, we no. So we have to yeah. cover the week seven. We have to cover this one that just happened. Yep. I thought we, we could do that. We predicted game. it last week. Remember, we predicted it last week. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And it All just right. ended. It just ended. Yes. Yeah. So Jags eke out a win, uh, thirty-one to twenty-four. They were up. 17-6 to six at the half, and then somehow the Chargers, uh, or the Saints, sorry, rally back and nearly win it. Uh, the final play of the game, uh, well, actually, the, there was a third and goal, which the Saints were at, ready to tie the game if they got it, and there was a pretty wide open Foster Moore in the, in the back of the end zone. No one was near him, and the ball just slips off his fingertips. So, rough end there. Yeah. Um, Derek Carr. Right there. Foster Moreau drops game-tying touchdown the end zone, final seconds. Yep. Uh, Derek yeah. Carr, 33 for 55 for 301, a 5.5 average, one touchdown, one pick, one sack, a 73.4 rating. Kamara ran for 62 yards and 17 carries, as well as Taysom Hill, 18 yards and 5 carries. Kamara oh, also 91 yards receiving on 12 carries. And, I mean, Kamara is just a beast for this team. Alave, 57 recep uh, receiving yards on 7 receptions, 4 for 50 for Taysom Hill, Michael Thomas, 3 for 42. For the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, 20 for 29, 204, 7 yard average, one touchdown, and a 100.4 rating. Um, for the rushing, Trevor Lawrence was the leader for their rushing. Eight carries, 59 yards, followed by ETN, 14 for 53, and two touchdowns. Uh, for receiving, Christian Kirk, six receptions for 90 yards, one touchdown, and the 44-yard long one was an amazing 
catch and run that he did that he got for a touchdown mm-hmm. later in the game. Evan Ingram, 5 for 45. Jamal Agnew, 4 for 36. Travis Etienne Jr., 3 for 24. Tim Jones, 2 for 17. Calvin Ridley, 1 for 5. Um, watching a bit of this game, uh, this was kind of a, a an odd kind of shootout. Both defenses were struggling to stop them offensively. However, Jacksonville was pressuring Carr a decent bit. Um and on the opposite side of things, the Jag- Jaguars' O-line tended to hold up pretty well. No sacks for Lawrence. Um, as far as QB hits, there were no QB hits. Like, that's Maybe pretty one. impressive in the NFL. No, none. Team, none. No QB oh. hits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no QB Ooh. hits, no sacks, only two tackles for loss for the Saints defense. Like, Saints Trent defense didn't look Lawrence- good, but at the same time, Jaguars' O-line Nice. Very well and done. And Lawrence scrambled. And Lawrence did some good scrambling. Yeah. So there was a couple times Lawrence got, the first, Lawrence got a couple first downs for him scrambling. So. And just a, a sad way to that. end the game, you know, chance to go to overtime and just slips off the fingertips just out of reach, literally. Yep. Um, I also don't know why Jamal Williams went here. Like, he's not getting any time. Only five carries, 14 yards. I don't get it. I mean, uh, like if, <laughs> Car- if Car- they Car- find him, him, knowing that Kamara's suspension is going to last longer, I would understand that. But he's already back and back in his role as RB one, so he's starting to look redundant. Yeah, especially when you have Taysom Hill and Derek Carr running ahead of him. I mean, Jamal yeah. Williams, like looking on another team that would need a running back. Like, could you imagine Jamal Williams on the Bills? Could you imagine Jamal Williams maybe on like the Panthers? Jamal Williams probably coming back to the Packers or the Vikings. The Vikings. Don't, as well. don't ever say that again. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> so Jamal I mean, Williams for the Patriots. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, this uh, Ramondre Stevenson isn't bad. He definitely will be splitting minutes with yeah. him, though. And yeah, then, someone that is bad uh, though, Ezekiel Elliott. Get rid got of him. Got you, got you a touchdown. Well, he got me got a, a touchdown, touchdown. but it, what, but that's yeah. the most he's really done for me all year so far. Yeah. What was Mamba about to say? I thought you were about to say something, Mamba. Me? No. Yeah. I, I wasn't about oh. to say anything. <laughs> no. It's been half yeah. asleep over there. Yeah, I would need to end this. Mamba's, yeah. Mamba's EP. I'm, Mamba I'm, very EP. Yeah, it's almost 1230 on my end. He's not ERP. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into some of our other aspects of this podcast. I guess we'll start. Raiders and... by seven. We're, oh, we're not going man. there yet. We're not going not there yet. yet. Not we're not going there yet. yet. <laughs> All right, we're starting with the Tank Bowl. Fuck me and trying to take this week. God damn it. Yeah, put the Bears oh, back where they belong. Put the Bears back where they belong. We didn't even get a dance out of you for this. What the fuck, man? No, you're really, you're really that was out. man. Actually, this wait, week put the Eagles out bad. Sucked in games. Can we just put? Actually, can we just put the yeah, NFL? Yeah, go ahead, do it. Do it. I'm so pissed, but I'm bad. <laughs> I'm pissed. So you know pissed. they're not that bad. You know you're not that. Bad. I, I, I know. One man, relax. Be humble for one Car- week. But Carolina's staying at worse. Yeah. But look, they do look like oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I have to put Bears at stinky right now because. Without Justin Fields, with getting, him getting hurt and just how they lost to the Vikings, they just look like shit. And Baggins does not look like an upgrade at all. Yeah. And then... <laughs> God damn it. It's either Giants or Denver at cringe. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Denver lost horribly. The Giants lost admirably, in a way. Keep in mind, yeah. the Patriots are also still in the running game. Oh, my God. Yeah, Denver at... Fringe and then New York at batter. And are you leaving the Patriots at bad? Right now, they're about to, yeah, Giants and the Patriots about the same. I guess leave it at that because I'm so surprised you don't have the Vikings in here, even though they're like two in like what? Two and four. They're I mean, look at the four. other teams that are on here, man. Yeah, almost like all they these actually teams have are one and five, except the Broncos. I think. I think they have the Vikings one. actually do have an offense. Like that was actually Kirk, Kirk Cousins' law. Like Kirk, uh, Vikings lost when Kirk Cousins did. Meh. Their offense the is Patriots, literally just Justin Jefferson, yeah, and now he's hurt. Yeah, and the Patriots are just shit, which is everybody healthy except for their defense. Yeah, no one feels bad except me. We yeah, and that was Madison's yeah. aneurysm bowl. 
I, I, I don't know. This, this, oh my God. Wait, do I have a sound? We'll, we'll let, we'll, we'll let him rest. Uh, meanwhile, I uh, thought, I thought I would laugh, but God damn it. Let's do something to take your mind off of it. Let's go ahead and go to the crossover grid real quick. Um, um, all right. Uh, oh, one playoff rush <laughs> touchdown. Um, Reggie Bush. Oh, Bush. Yep. Um, one one playoff, playoff sack, sack uh, defense. Uh, Davenport. Davenport. Marcus Was Davenport. Uh, no. no. Oh. I don't Jonathan think he was there Zola. when they were in the playoffs. Oh, Vilma, probably. Yep. There you okay. go. Um, uh, non QB passing touchdown. Can we say Taysom Josh Hill? Josh Allen. Yeah. Yeah. We can say Taysom Hill for the uh, Saints non QB uh, passing touchdown. Oh, yeah. There's two. Josh. Oh, uh, oh there's three. 20, 28, <laughs> there's three. Uh, he was never in the. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That 2018 to 2022. No. That's 2019, yeah, that's, Josh Allen. Not oh my god! Not QB <laughs> passing touchdown yeah. for Saints. Can we put Jason Hill in? Yeah, is you want to put Jason Hill for Saints? He? Hey, hey. hey. Um, <laughs> who's that not QB passing touchdown for the the fucking Jaguars? Yeah. Uh. Fuck. Uh, nope. Christian Kirk. No. Right. Um, um, for the Falcons, for non QB passing Falcons touchdowns, rushing touchdown in the playoffs. Uh, was it? On, I don't I think it's see. Falcons that were the uh, oh. twenty sixteen. Patrick Kearney, let's go. Um, non QB pass. T- can we put Julio Jones for the Falcons? I don't think he ever threw. I'm thinking Muhammad Sanu. We've yeah. been with him 11 years now. Nope. Okay, well. Playoff rush touchdown. Um, Cordell, not Cordell Pass. No, Patterson um, wasn't on. Uh, oh, they had. Um, they had a, something who was the running back during Vic's time. Michael Vick. No, they had a, the actual running back, the position. Michael Vick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was thinking of um, some PJ Duckett. Uh, let's go. Hey, I was hey. thinking of like Tevin Coleman or something like that, or yeah, Foreman, whatever. Non QB passing TD. Uh, try Muhammad Sanu. Roddy, what? No. Okay. Yes, new probably. Yep, Muhammad Sanu. Hey, there you go. Um, okay, now one we're going to play rush touchdown. Um, oh, you got you got to put a fucking Fournette. Oh yeah. No, he was no, he was no, he was hurt during that playoff. Oh, was he? Oh, he wait, played he on the Jags and ran for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. No, I see, I see. Yeah. So non QB passing touchdown for the Jaguars. That's the one that's probably gonna be the toughest because I Oh fuck. Uh I'm checking if Maurice Jones drew ever through. Yeah, same. He did. Oh, oh, wow. I just, well, I just did. There we go. Another Maurice Grady Jones. Jarrett, Cameron yep. Jordan. He, I love these pictures. Cameron Jordan always takes the funniest like <laughs> images. He grows out his hair, does something funny. Um, it all, the, uh, the Allen Iverson look, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Um, all right. Uh, before we get into game of the um Mamba, who was your MVP for the week of games? Who's there? It is gonna be Tyree Kill for that fucking flip and the touchdown. Oh yeah, oh, okay. Tyree oh. took a selfie video mm-hmm. while doing a back Justin flip. Fields before he broke his thumb. All right, uh, <laughs> and, no, and, and for the sixth week in a row, Dick Butkus. <laughs> 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 no, he was MVP last Here week. Here we go. Yeah. Talks. Oh, uh, I hated <laughs> this week. <laughs> Oh my god. What? I gambled with Dorlami. We're taking a gamble with my uh, captain. We we banned this guy. How from much gambling. are you losing? Um dollar at a time? Not fucking losing much. 
like no, chicken, I mean, man. like, how bad are you going to lose? Jesus well, fuck, dude. This will put me in the money. Will it, though? This will put me if in the Jones money. Is... Says every gambler ever. <laughs> if Jones has a good game, this will just put me in the money. Says every gambler ever. <laughs> what you read saying for these players, except for Jones? This is because cursed. this is just this is just with everybody Ryan, picking for this game. Yeah, P Ryan at two thousand dollars is honestly a good pick. I think these are the picks the of a man unhinged. I know it's the Broncos, but still, he could have some good yards. And Sutton's going to get you points. Broncos Dobbs is going to sneak in. Die. Dobbs is going to sneak in some points somewhere. Musgrave will put in some points. Perrine, one week he's bad, another week he puts up on twelve points. Shut up. <laughs> Pipe down, pipe down over there, goddamn news anchor. <laughs> no, All right, excuse me. We're we're yeah, we're moving on. All right. Anchor man over here. Oh my god, we're so yes. fucked up this week. Oh fuck! You know what we forgot to do? What? What? What did we forget to do? Update. Oh yeah, I, oh, no. I forgot. <laughs> to I mean, we did it. I... I, I got the updated for the Jacksonville New Orleans. Game, All right, so, so read us from bottom. Know. Read us from bottom to top. Bottom I don't know. is Mamba at sixty three and thirty five. Mamba, uh, okay, so nothing changes there. He went ten and seven this week. I'm so Next, scared. Christ. Next is me that went sixty. That sixty four and thirty nine. I went ten and six this week. Then it's K Duff at seventy uh, and thirty nine. Uh, he went fourteen Are you and five. Orgasming? Can we get a drum roll for the top two? But <laughs> no, no. Gorlami <laughs> is seventy and thirty-seven <laughs> at eleven and seven. And I like you, uh, Lob. Lob Lob is seventy-two and thirty-six. He went thirteen and five this week. Here's your drum roll. You. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? You know, I stayed at the top this whole time, so. Didn't. It's only a matter of time, Vegas Vipers fan. All so right. The 2020 Pittsburgh Steelers looked how it worked there for them. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start. Enough. Let's go ahead and start out with the Raiders and Bears from Chicago, Illinois. Um, Mom already gave us his predictions. Right, yeah, damn it, this fucking game. I'm going to take. Um, there's probably no Justin Fields, so for that reason, but there's Miami no Jimmy Garoppolo. Holy Fuck. So you have to pick between either uh, Ryan Hoyer or Aiden O'Connell or Tyson Baggins. Uh, 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 da, da, da. I'm going to take the Raiders by tree. Me, Raiders by seven. Raiders by one. Fuck this game. I don't want to watch this game. God fucking game. All right. All right. So the Packers beat the Bears, right? The Raiders yes. beat the Packers. So therefore, give me the Raiders by ten. Give me Raiders by six. All right, Browns Colts. Um, this is from Indianapolis. Mm. No Anthony Richardson. A really good Browns defense um, that really was able to actually Anthony win a game against Richardson. the uh, 49ers. Watson might be back. So as much as it hates to say, I'm going to take the Browns by seven in this one. Uh, Browns by three. I'm saying Cleveland by four. That defense is really good. Um, I mean, else by nine. Oh, I was like, what, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a brownie. It's not an elf. It looks like an well, elf. Well, brownie the elf. That being said, oh. give me brownie and his team by uh, six. I mean... Oh yeah, that's right. I forget with European folklore, brownies are kind of like a uh, elf in European folklore. Okay. Uh, Bills Patriots that. from Foxborough. Uh, Bills by fourteen. Uh, Bills by ten. Bills by seven. Bills by seventeen. Patriots by four. I can't even say. You can't serious about that. Uh, Bills by ten. <laughs> Uh, next up, uh, Commanders, Commanders Giants from East Rutherford. No. Still no uh, no timetable as of now as far as Daniel Jones' return, if he's going to happen, if it's going to happen in this game or not. So for that matter, I think I'm going to take uh, I'm gonna take the Commanders in this one. 
by five. Commanders I will not count by... this time. Commanders by seven. Ty, Ty, Ty. I want another tie again. Please let there be another really? tie again like last year. <laughs> Please. I am Are you taking a tie? Here. Yes. Are you taking a tie? Yes. You yeah, the commanders by three. A logical point difference. Commanders by 14. Um, next up, Falcons, Buccaneers. Um, interesting game because the Buccaneers do tend to be on a bit of a hot streak sometimes. Um, but the Falcons, they are playing at home. yeah, and the Falcons look good, but like Riddler does mm-hmm. not. So it's a tough pick here, but um, I'm gonna go with my gut, and my gut says the Falcons because they'll be able to run on the Buccaneers. So give me the Falcons in this one by three. There you Yo, go. Baker Maddie lost, and he's gonna come back and pounce those Falcons. Also, I do not. Uh, I do not pick the Falcons because every time I pick the Falcons, I lose. So I'm going to go Buccaneers by sweet uh, seven. I think it actually would be an ugly game, but Mikey Mayfield may actually pull it out. Tampa Bay by six. Uh, you know what? Let Baker bake. Give me the Buccaneers by nine. Uh, give me Buccaneers by seven, but if they don't, the Falcons don't start Taylor Heineke, Buccaneers by twenty. Uh, right. Uh, Lions. Uh, so you think twenty? Like which? Are you going by seven or twenty? It depends on who they start this week. You can't get a clause to that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there's no clause. Right, fine. That's fine. By seven. By seven. Okay. Okay. Um, Lions. Ravens. Uh, I think I'll take the Lions in this one. I'll take them by 14. They look like a good team. Ravens are banged up. I think the Lions will get it done. Go oh, Lions by three. Somehow my supervisor at work is like, yeah, Detroit's going to lose to the Ravens. He's a Detroit fan. I'm like, no, no, no. You're going to destroy Ravens. Detroit by 17. It's fucking banged up. The offense doesn't look good. It's like Greg Roman's back <laughs> as an offense coordinator. Yeah. You know he's not. <laughs> Uh, in Campbell, we trust. Lions by 10. Looks like kneecaps are back on the menu, boys. Lions by 16. <laughs> Ravens got one ass cheek, and he's going to beat their ass. <laughs> yep. Instead of purple, it's going to be red. Um, Steelers, Rams. Um, I still don't believe the Steelers are a complete team. I think there's a lot of infighting with Canada. You saw the Chris Boswell clip last year of Canada yeah. getting a hug as they went close game, and he told him that was not because of you. I can guarantee you that. So I like what Matt Stafford's <laughs> doing, spreading the ball around a little bit between a couple different receivers and Cooper Cup's back. Their running looks good. I'm going to take the Rams on this one by five. Uh, Rams by seven again. Steelers going to fucking lose this game. Rams <laughs> by ten. Fuck you, Matt Canada. Yeah, giving them a, give them the Ram and the Rams five fourteen. This week on Days of Our Steelers, the, Steelers. the black and gold brigade, the black and gold brigade lose by seven. Uh, Cardinals Seahawks. I'm taking the Seahawks in this one. I think they'll win by fourteen. They'll have a bounce back week from the loss they had against my Bengals. Yeah, Seahawks by uh, ten. I'm going to go Seahawks by 10. Arizona's going to give them a tough time, but too much talent on Seattle. I was going to say 10, but give the Seahawks by 9 then. You can Fuck still say guys. 10, motherfucker. No, you no, can still no. Say... I want to be different. I want to be different. I don't want to be different. Seahawks by 10. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, k Um, Packers and Broncos. Um, Broncos by 14. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to take the <laughs> Packers in this one by 7. I already made the joke I, earlier. Uh, the I I hate you. <laughs> Bamba. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um 
uh, I hate doing this, but I want to have to do it. Packers three. by three. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to fuck up less? Green Bay is going to fuck up one less time. So Green Bay by two. That depends on the score I want. <laughs> Packers by seven. It hurts to say only seven. I mean, you'll still win. It's the fucking yeah, Broncos. Still win. Uh, yeah, same regard. Packers by nine. I don't want to make well, a I'll, bet on this. I'll have because slightly more lose, faith in them I than probably you. Probably will just. You already made a stop bet. watching football. You made I know, a bet. But I'll just stop watch. I'll stop watching football for the rest oh. of the fucking year. All right, uh, no, Chargers, no, Chiefs. Not. I'm gonna take the Chiefs in this one by 14. I'm gonna go Chiefs by three. Ah, uh, Kansas City by 10. Give me them Chiefs by seven. Give me the Kansas City Swifties by 12. <laughs> Um, Monday night game, or sorry, Sunday night game should be really good. Dolphins Eagles um, from Philadelphia. Uh, it's going to be a shootout, I think. Dolphins defense is not that good, um, and the Eagles defense is struggling from injuries. Um, I... Is it too early to call us a possible Super Bowl matchup? No, yeah. no. These yeah. teams definitely look really strong um, so far. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen as far Niners. as injuries. Replace Eagles with Niners, and they got a Super I mean, Bowl you could swap any of these teams out for a strong team. You could even say Eagles, Niners, yeah. maybe even stretch it and say Lions. For Dolphins, you could easily right. say Dolphins. Dolphins you could say Lions, Chiefs. Definitely. You could say Chiefs. Chiefs. Like, you know, there's a lot of other teams Bills. that could turn it around. Bills. If the Bengals turn it around, they could even be that. Like, there's a lot of different options there. So, I mean, but yes, that, that this definitely could be a Super Bowl matchup compared to how the teams are looking so far. Um, however, uh... The greatest show on turf the Dolphins have right now is good. This is a late game in Philly. It's going to be cold. Those Miami boys won't like it because it's cold. Also, I think the lacking off Dolphins defense, I think, is not going to be able to do much against a Eagles team that's going to really put their foot down after losing. The Eagles are a very emotional team as their head coach is a just jackass. Sorry, but he is. Um... I think the Eagles are. I think the Eagles are going to win this one by three in a close game. It's going to be a really good game. My opposite, Dolphins by three. I the second the Philly secondary has to improve. I think Miami is going to really butcher that defense. The secondary. I think Miami by three. Wow. I like this is one of those. They like if if the secondary was healthy, I think I would have gone to Eagles, but it's just that secondary is just so injured and Tua's going off, Tyree Kill's going off. There's just so much going for Miami. There's only so much that Eagles could do for well, offensively. I mean, you, you could probably stuff that run game and your defensive line could probably stop Raheem Mostert. And then but but then all of a sudden could go, give up like four hundred yards on passing. I until they actually show me with that secondary. That's my thing. And yes, just play calling defense, that. All that defense line has to do is kill Tua. Again. For the third time. But I've still, anyway, like, right, Dolphins by seven. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right now I'm going Dolphins by three. I also play calling has to be. Better. Only one saying fly Eagles fly right now. You're the one. No, I'm not. You're. I'm not saying it. Uh, Dolphins by ten. Wow, I'm the one picking the Eagles. Okay. I'm not gonna um, be like, oh, it's a blowout. Oh, it's, it's gonna be. It close. probably won't be. All right. Uh, next one: 49ers Vikings Monday night. It's Kirk Cousins in a Monday night game. I'm taking the 49ers by ten. Injuries or no injuries, uh, it's gonna happen. 49ers by fourteen. Yep. 49ers by thirteen. 49ers by 17. Uh, 49ers by 16. 
I'm going to hate this week because look at the buys that we have. Bengals, Titans, yeah. Jets. I have Derrick Henry, Brees Hall, and Jamar Chase all on the bench this week. Bengals, yeah. Cowboys, Titans, Jets, Panthers, and Texans all have buys this week. Um, one more game and for us Travis, to predict. Oh, yeah. Travis Etienne got me 20 points already. Ooh. And then we have Buccaneers and Bills Thursday night football um, from Orchard Park, New York in Buffalo, New York. Uh I think I'll take the Bills in this one by... I think it's going to go badly for the Buccaneers. I'll take 17 for the Bills. But the Bills have a little bit of a blowout there. Okay, oh, I'm going Bills by... Um, 10. I'm going Buffalo by 3 because it's Thursday night game and it's going to suck again. The Bills by 6, just for fun. Enough. Oh, sorry. I was checking something. Uh, give me Bills by 14. Alrighty. Uh, so, does your shirt say poo? It's Foo oh, Fighters. No, Foo Fighters. Oh, Foo Fighters. I, th- I, thought you say, I thought your shirt just said poo. I'm like, well, that describes <laughs> this week. <laughs> no, it's like, well, yes, <laughs> but uh, no, this is from when they uh, played Fenway in 2019. Ah. Much much like the Patriots, they are the pretenders. Yeah, yeah much room to talk, Packers mm-hmm. fan. Oh, I Sounds knew this like coming into it. <laughs> fuck this week. Fuck this past week of games. This was a rough week of football to watch for a lot of us. For many people, it was a really tough <laughs> week for, for a lot of teams. Um, yeah, you were on a bye. Well, that, the, Monday night was hard for you. Last I was week, safe. So. I was safe for one week. You almost had the same records as the Vikings. Fuck That's the only reason why. Still better than Mamba's team. All right. Um, I guess this is a good place to end it. So uh, for myself, for Masson, for Mamba, for Kadef, and for Gurlami, thank you for watching the Football Stooges. Um, enjoy football, even when it's tough. Um, because it, as, as Masson is showing you, as Masson is showing you, bang his head to a table. It can be rough sometimes. But enjoy football. Have a great time as best you can. Uh, enjoy the games coming up because we're basically at the halfway point of the season nearly. Week 8's just around the corner. Um, and most importantly, as always, run the damn ball. Have a good night. 5-1, suck it up. <laughs>